Open up that crystal Pepsi and get comfortable. This is Dope Nostalgia. time today guys for being here for the show uh this is a big exciting day as it gets bigger and better for our fourth birthday party at dope nostalgia podcast um i'm very excited to introduce you to everybody who's here but before we do that i just want to give a shout out to no more games radio because since the inception of the podcast pretty close to it those guys have been carrying the show every weekend at on saturdays i want to thank them because they mean a lot to us and uh you can catch adrian's show on there too Nice. Ask Adrian. Ask Adrian is also a featured mm -hmm. show on No More Games Radio. So that's new and exciting. I'll get you to tell everybody about it when I introduce everybody. Um, I also want to thank Sound Sugar Radio, based out of Edmonton, Alberta, for very recently starting to play our show. So the cheers to Sound Sugar Radio. You can check them out, soundsugarradio.com. As well, I want to let everybody know we do have a Patreon. A Patreon is a place where you can just have a subscription that's uh can you hear my cat meowing? Okay. <laughs> no. That supports the show. You can subscribe for a dollar a month, and that just helps going towards the fees of produ producing the show. As well, we have a merch shop on tpublic.com. All those links are at dopenostalgia.com and you can check them out there. All right, so. Most of you here have met before, but some of you haven't. I know I want to start with introducing Niskers. Niskers has been on two episodes of Dope Nostalgia now. We did the snacks and candy episode and the Columbia House episode, which were really fun. So hi, Niskers. Hello, everybody. I do like a lot of snacks. <laughs> I like a lot of snacks. I think I have a lot of snack knowledge. So if you want to talk 90s candy, um, yeah, I have your girl to chat with that. Yes. Um, I'll also let you guys know, I was a very, very, very spoiled kid in the 90s, so I didn't have to beg for anything. So chances are, if you wanted it, I probably had it. <laughs> so I'm super happy to be here. She's our go-to person for all those things that we wanted to have, but we couldn't get. <laughs> I think our friend Colin said that once too, didn't he? Pretty much get everything he wanted. This yeah. <laughs> That's funny. All right. And of course, Kendra is here. Kendra is a regular on the show and she's also a musician. Tell everybody all about yourself, Kendra. Oh, uh, yeah. On the Dope Nostalgia with you since uh, episode 11. That was a while ago. Started out on uh, the Mr. Big episode and uh, I've been coming back ever since. You, you keep having me back. I'm going to keep coming back. I've been a fan of the show since day one and I was really excited to be a part of it. Uh, yeah, I'm a musician around town, play shows pretty much every other weekend, and uh, going to be hopefully releasing some of our own music this year. So stay tuned for that. And yeah, yeah, I'm really happy to be here. Show everyone the t-shirt because uh, you got something right from that merch shop. Oh, there. yeah, from, right from that merch shop. Dope Nostalgia oh. Podcast. Oh, love it. Yeah. That's so and fun. And then I got the, the mug to support the that mug. too the mug yeah all right the let's mug. talk to rebecca <laughs> well rebecca and chrissy are both here from the nkotb meow meow crew but i'll let them introduce themselves separately we'll start with rebecca oh well we're kind of like a duo aren't we okay <laughs> okay you can both it's okay Hi, that's rebecca. Rebecca. the other <laughs> and that's chrissy um we're both new kids fans and uh, we met at a new kids concert at our bar stools and we've been inseparable ever since. Oh, and we should mention me. I'm after how we started with that. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. 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 So we wore these when we went to uh, speaking of shirts, Fenway. Um, but that was, it was just so we could see, like we have this whole group of online friends and it was the first time we were meeting up post pandemic. And we just wanted to be able to like see each other easily. And we just kind of started wearing them to different events just for fun. And it was in 2022 in San Diego, we went to our first of our California shows and we were going through meet and greet. And Donnie told one of our friends, I like your meow meow ears. And we were like, oh, they didn't have a name, but now they're now they're what we do. <laughs> and we're like, this would be kind of like a fun, like IG channel to just like share like how 
we all like get together and travel and go to shows. And so now it's just a place where we can post content and edits and, you know, pictures and stuff of all of us having fun. And Naomi and Adrian are both part of our crew now. Yes. We've got to we'll get ears. Jimmy this summer. Anyway, Jimmy's going <laughs> to join. Oh We're my God. Wear. Jimmy with Meow Meow, like, and, oh yeah, that's going to be yeah. great. <laughs> you can wear my leopard print ones. See? Or we can get Paige to make him a bandana like she did for oh, Joe. Oh, you, if you'd rather a bandana, we could get you a bandana. As long as it's leopard print because some <laughs> don't go with my underwear. Okay. <laughs> we'll make that happen. I think that's a good idea. That leads into Jimmy. James P. White is here with us. He's been on several episodes as well. He went through my countdown of the uh, top 10 of every year in the 90s. We did that. Yeah, I've been a fan of your podcast since day one, but I've been a fan of you a bit longer. You know, we've been friends for quite a while. And and uh, I, I love talking music. Like, I'm in radio. Don't play much in 90s pop music, but we're a rock station, but. Just, 90s rock is just as important on our show, Paul. You guys play some awesome grunge music. He's like, yeah. Yep. <laughs> He's like, sure. I listen to your radio station. I know that much. <laughs> well, sorry. What you said just went over my head. <laughs> so, so does everything. Um, <laughs> but honestly, you know what's great, Jimmy? <laughs> Jimmy is, uh, you can catch him on Cruise FM. There's a website you can listen all around the world. They are our morning crew right here in Edmonton. And uh, they've got merch too. Um, I'm working on getting myself a Cinnamon Jimmy toque. Oh, I second that. Yeah. For, right in time for Valentine's Day. What can go wrong? Don't you even have like a Star Wars podcast or something? Oh, yeah. I guess I do have a podcast. Hence all the lightsabers <laughs> behind me. Um, I have the Jedi Jimmy podcast. It's basically anything Star Wars. I talk about it and including lightsaber combat. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's going to be coming. So he is he's confirmed it on his own radio show that he is coming with me to Northern California this summer to go to the um, Magic Summer Tour. We're going to hang out at Rebecca's house go in the pool get drunk we're gonna take jimmy to a new kid's show and uh and he's gonna teach the kids some lightsaber combat mm -hmm. yeah it's gonna be interesting i'm gonna get beat up by kids with lightsabers <laughs> Ooh, can i send my kid over too well one of my kids is 19 and huge so uh, he, also. he also knows his lightsaber combat so oh this is gonna be, It'll be interesting. a fair fight yeah oh, <laughs> I better practice up. <laughs> Ours are our kid, our our younger ones are both nine. Okay, good. I won't get beat up as bad then <laughs> by the nine year olds. I don't know. They're pretty uh, hardcore. We'll see. The That's nine year olds are probably going to be tougher than the nineteen year old. <laughs> Shout out to JD. I can see I can see you guys in the chat. I opened it up on my phone so I can actually say stuff. So we're good. And yeah, she was. Last... Oh, sorry. She was talking under ours, so it looked like I was just talking a whole bunch in the chat. <laughs> so she no got problem. on hers. <laughs> last but not least, our our good friend Adrian is here from Rattail, and I'm so happy you made it. Yes. Hi. Thank you for having me. My name is Adrian. I'm your friend Adrian. I'm from Rattail. Brad tells a YouTube channel where we react to, love on, commentate on all things New Kids on the Block. Um, I also have my own radio show called Ask Adrian, where I give unqualified advice to everybody's blockhead and non-blockhead problemos. Um, and I have a little bit of a speech. I don't want to take over, but I do want to share, you know, Rat Tail, we are right behind you, Naomi. We're about like three and a half years old. Um, and I can remember that Dope Nostalgia was one of the first podcasts that we went on. And um, we also filmed an episode with Naomi as well. And really, when I think back to some of the fondest memories of starting Rat Tail, it really involves Dope Nostalgia. And I'm just, I'm so proud of you, Naomi. I think as a content creator, like all of us are in the Nougat's on the Block fandom, Naomi really is just the consummate professional. She's an amazing friend. 
Your content is outstanding. I love when people continue to discover you. And four years is just fantastic, Naomi. And I know we are all so proud of you and just love getting to be your friend and fellow content creator. So cheers to you. Well, let's do our, I love you, Adrian. You're so love amazing. Love you, girl. We're going to do our cheers now with our first shot. <laughs> we got I, our I don't have a glasses. So I'm just going <laughs> to. <laughs> I love it. Cheers. I'm okay, the one is. without the rat tail glass. Mm -hmm. I had my Maui one. Vodka straight out so. of the bottle. I love it. Right out of the bottle. Oh, I'm ready God. to go. <laughs> I took tomorrow off for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I do want to say too, like what she said, I mean, I hugely admire rat tail. I discovered them when it was 2020 and everything. I was living by myself and I was like, spent all my time online, pretty much on Zoom with friends and such, as Kendra knows. And uh, <laughs> I started getting like heavy into new kids again. And uh, I so I was like on YouTube and I saw this baby, I believe in you react. And uh, I was like, well, I'm a Jordan girl. I, I'm, I'm into this. Let's, let's watch it. And Adrian and Chris come on and it's the absolute funniest thing I've seen in forever. I cannot stop laughing at these two and the reaction to this Jordan taking off his shirt and everything. And so I reached out to her. I was like, I'd love to have you guys on the show because I find what you're doing fascinating and I think more people need to know about it. And I mean, not that I have a, a I wasn't a huge podcast. I still am not a huge podcast, but I was like, I really enjoyed what you were doing. And I thought, why don't a bunch of us help each other? And we do this NKO TV block action. We'll put it all together. Yeah. And um, I was just was like, I was hugely happy to become friends with you and, and Chris and just especially grateful for all the times we've, gotten to be together now in person and yeah. just you guys mean a lot to me a lot to oh. me so thank you thank for your you. friendship and same to Rebecca and Chrissy like you guys all live in the okay. states we're up here in freezing Canada four of us are in freezing <laughs> Edmonton yep <laughs> yeah I'm so excited because this summer we're gonna coalesce at a meow meow crew headquarters and it's just gonna be a fucking amazing time yeah mm -hmm. Yeah. Can I just say, like, it, I th I think it's just amazing watching the fact that you guys, like, you know, have cultivated th this friendship over, like, something that you all love so dearly. And, like, I think it's amazing that, like, you guys have, like, gotten so many, like, friends out of this deal. And, uh, like, across the world, like, you got people, like, all the way in, what, New Zealand and that, too? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Out of the Netherlands. Australia. Yeah. That's Australia. amazing. I think that, like, it's so cool that the things can bring people together so like genuinely and like yeah I, I I'm I'm always like so excited like living through Naomi and her trips and everything and maybe one day I'll come with you guys I was gonna say well maybe you should <laughs> be playing one day I, 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 maybe one day I, I'll, I'll definitely go on a trip with her for one of these things I have to be there for the party <laughs> I was yes. going to say June 2nd or not June, July 2nd to July 3rd this year. Sounds like a great time. <laughs> just saying. Just around that well, time. See how, how much We're money I can get on from Rebecca's couch. <laughs> oh, hey, that, that's some money saving or tips there, yard. right? Or in her, yeah. there's you know, we have some space. lounge chairs out there. You can sleep in the lounge chair outside. Hey, ask Naomi. I can sleep anywhere. She's She made a whole calendar of me sleeping in this chair. So There is. There is a calendar available. <laughs> I have it right, right here. <laughs> Show them. There is a picture. We'll get them to every... mattresses, too. Well, and I was going to say the, those... the front page of it. <laughs> <laughs> Those chairs Literally a whole are calendar. adjacent to the tiki bar in her backyard, so it's quite convenient. You roll I'll out of there. I'll show you guys my favorite one. Oh <laughs> There's so goodness. many of them. Yeah, this we one. it's happened so many times on Zoom that we had to make. A oh my god! It. <laughs> with Bernie, Bernie Sanders. Uh, yeah, that's hilarious. <laughs> there's, I've been there's witness many to a lot of those. Yeah, yeah, you were there for those. That's for we sure. usually pin her on the Zoom screen so we can all stare at her sleeping and then try to <laughs> scream at the same time to wake her up. She's and and most you... of the time we end up having to uh, text her wife to wake her up saying, oh, yeah, she might want to go to bed. <laughs> Kendra, I feel you. That happened to me in a Zoom and they had to call my husband. They were like, she needs coffee and she needs bread. 
right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what? sometimes I was just tired. It was even I was strong, but <laughs> you know, I can sleep anywhere. I, I'm a good sleeper. Well, when we first started the show in 2020, usually like I, for some of us weren't working for about what, a good two, three months there. Mm-hmm. So we were up on Zoom like till like seven in the morning. <laughs> there was one morning where we were, I think it was 10 a.m. Like the sun was up and yeah. I'm taking selfies in the bathroom drunk and like posting I... them on our chat. <laughs> she sent, she sent chips to Guam. <laughs> oh, I Guam? sent ketchup chips to Guam. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that, there was a that girl in from Guam. A drunken night. Yeah, a fourteen-year-old girl from Guam came on to our stream. We were streaming live on Twitch, and she says, "Oh, you guys are from Canada. I love Canada. I've always wanted to go there. I've really wanted to get the ketchup chips, but we tried to go there once, and they wouldn't let us cross the border." And she, her parents are military, and they're stationed in Guam. So me being drunk, I'm like, "Don't worry, I got you. I'm gonna <laughs> get you ketchup chips." What are <laughs> ketchup chips? You haven't had ketchup chips? No, I have no clue what these are. It's like it's ketchup uh, Rebecca. chips. Oh. Okay, that's on the list. That's on the list for June. Yeah. We so go I'm gonna bring, we're going to bring ketchup chips. We'll over okay. to Cross over to Canada for a second. Yeah, we'll, we'll go on okay. a snack. We're going to go on a snack run in Canada. I, in June, I would like that. If we can go, is it London, Ontario? No. That's across Windsor. Windsor. It's Windsor. And it's right across from Detroit, right under the tunnel. Okay, so we're going to Windsor in June. We're going to party in Canada together. Niskers can tell us like the top snacks for us to go and get. Yes. Oh yeah, I can I can have a good list made of things that you guys need to get, both local Ooh. and national. I got you. A thousand percent. Oh, Niskers. Niskers, I don't even know, like, I've never really talked to you about New Kids. Are you a New Kids fan? Were you a New Kids fan as a child? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Did the list of questions that you sent out your first concert? My first concert was New Kids on the Block in Saskatoon on November the 3rd, 1990. <laughs> Who's your favorite guy? Tell us, Nisker. Oh, my God. Okay, so it's a funny story. It was Joey for the longest time when I lived in Beaumont, which was, like, really close to where I live now. And then when we moved to Saskatchewan, all of the girls in my class, they were in love with Jordan, and I wanted to fit in so bad that I switched over to Jordan. So, OG Joey lover. Swerve. But but swerve. You had a pure pressure. I like it. I did. I did. You know what? Jordan has these magical hips that pull, like almost pull me over. But I'm still like, no, I gotta stay with Joe. But it's okay. That's me. I was an OG Joe girl, and I just swerved to Jordan. So I feel so understood. Yes, (laughs) Jordan's my number five because he's too beautiful, and I can't handle him. So he's number five. Like. That's what you get for being that gorgeous. It's like eye roll gorgeous. Like, oh my God. <laughs> my favorite thing too, remember in 2022 on the mixtape tour when we all did our meet and greet in SAC? I think it was SAC because Chris was right behind me. I just did my picture with Jordan or whatever. And then Chris was like saying hi to all the guys. And he just like looks at Jordan. He doesn't even like shake his hand or anything. <laughs> oh, you no, he goes, he goes, He's oh, pretty. hi. He's like, hi. <laughs> And that was it. <laughs> I, I think and he Jordan was on that post, like, Donnie. Hi. Yeah, I think Jordan was probably excited to meet Chris too. You know, he's just like hi, and then moves on to Joe. That was. Well, <laughs> I mean, you can't go wrong with any of them, really. You really can't. I know James, Jimmy, Jimmy. Don't feel left out, Jimmy. You have a favorite new kid. Do I? Yes. Yeah. Okay, I'm a fan of Donnie. <laughs> wait do you want the star wars guy though because that's danny yeah danny is a star wars one danny's a star wars guy he wears star wars shirts on in the concerts and everything oh i'm donny you know i, I like <laughs> i like blue bloods uh, <laughs> oh my gosh naomi real quick um i i have to to press the exit button but thank you so much for having me um Thank you so much. It's happy fourth anniversary. This is thrilling. And I can't wait to see all the places Dope Nostalgia goes. Thank you. I love you. Yeah. Thank love you. you. I love you, all. Adrian. Yes. Thank you. Cheers to Rattel. I I may oh, never leave. Really... Another... You're not allowed to, to leave. It doesn't want to let you. Mm. I know. Talk with us. All right. <laughs> love you. Dope Nostalgia. Bye. Ah!
<laughs> <laughs> you know when whenever she's ready to go, she's just gone. Like, <laughs> but she's not a ghost. Bye, she's not a yeah, ghost. She doesn't she's ghost. A ghost. No, no, she always says bye. Mm-hmm. And it's you know I knew I knew going into today that she wouldn't be able to spend much time, but I'm so glad she was here. So thank you, Adrian, for being here. Um, which means. Unless anybody else has something they want to do, we could go into our uh, the questions I prepared yeah. <laughs> for another oh, shot. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, you know what? We should do at least four Rebecca. shots for the four birthdays. Oh, Everybody. yeah. Well, I didn't feel so, this one up all the way because I figured there'd be more. So this is okay. one and a half. So one and a half. I'm doing years. a half shot because I'm, I'm also Tears. sickly, so I can't be stupid. I still I, have to yeah, get, I'm just get through recovering from being sick. So yeah, <laughs> I still we, I still got to get through the party tonight at Kelly's Pub. If you live in Edmonton, we're going to Kelly's Pub tonight. We'll be there around nine ten o'clock, starting our '90s karaoke. Come dressed up '90s, come sing '90s songs. There's going to be prizes and fun and drink specials. I oh, wish I we were close did mine. enough to go. Yeah, I know that would be so sweet. That's why we got to do it. We're doing this for everybody who can't make it, all international, and then the ones in town. We're gonna have a Good time singing. So cheers. Cheers. Yes. Mm. I can't do too many shots. I have to get up at three o'clock in the morning. That's true. You can shoot water. It's healthy. <laughs> Hydrate yourself. Jimmy's like, fuck that. <laughs> like, who, shoot who that? water. Okay. All right. So what we're what I did is I, div- I I thought up a bunch of questions that I wanted to learn a little more about all of you. And uh, the people in the chat, hey, I want to see your answers too, because we're going to include them on this on these questions. Feel free to type your answers. And uh, just a bunch of stuff about us growing up, because most of us are in the same age range, approximately, give or take 10 years, right? So from our experiences growing up in the 90s, these 90s orientated questions are for everyone. So I'm going to start with asking, I'm, I'm looking in my box going like this. I'm going to start with Niskers and I want to ask you about your first concert. You already mentioned what it was. New Kids Saskatchewan. Yeah. Saskatoon? Saskatoon, November 3rd, 1990. What were your seats like? They weren't great seats. My mom got them from one of her cousins who I think worked for whatever establishment was putting on the concert. So I don't think even we paid all that much. Remember there was a lot of people and I remember screaming Jordan's name until my throat was raw, thinking, oh, yeah, he, he's going to hear me. He's going to hear me. He's going to love me. We'll live <laughs> happily ever after. Was he, did, did he do the baby I believe in you white shirt blowing open? Yeah. Yeah. Was that the original Magic Summer Tour or was that the No More Games Tour? Yeah, I don't remember. I think yeah, that was Magic Games Summer. Tour. 90? 90 was Magic Summer until the end of the year. And then it switched over. To the No More Games Tour? Because that was my- when they decided to get hard. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, let's move. <laughs> uh, Jimmy's like, please, please move on. Okay. Well, you're going to have so much summer. It's going to be a happens. magic summer for you. <laughs> this is what happens when you join a podcast with all women. Oh, yeah. And I also bought your airline ticket, so you can't back out now. So, yeah. <laughs> You're good. You're good to go. Okay. Um, Chrissy, your first concert. My first concert was New Kids on the Block, but it was when Magic Summer turned into No More Games. Mine was in Sacramento and February, I think it was the 21st of uh, 1990. And my seats were crazy second level, super no- like nosebleed. But I just remember my friend Steph and I waited we our parents wouldn't let us stay overnight outside of warehouse to get the tickets but she or mainly because she had a um a newspaper route so i stayed the night at her house her mom drove us around so she could deliver papers faster and then dropped us off super early and we were in a long line outside of the warehouse waiting for hours for them to open up oh wow, wow that, Old that's awesome. tickets for me. Yeah. i know none of the queue that we have no. Well, and now I think it's more stressful now. Yeah, because we're trying for good tickets. We just wanted any ticket then. No, back then we would camp out for tickets. I would camp, I've camped out at a mall. I've camped mm-hmm. out outside of the actual Coliseum. Mm-hmm. I did that for Bon Jovi twice. They're the only ones I that we camped out for. 
<laughs> um, like I said in the chat, guys, tell us your first concerts too, or or concerts in the nineties that you went to that are memorable. Jimmy, tell us about yours. Uh, it was nineteen ninety four. It was I can't remember. It was a winter, but it was Garth Brooks, and I saw him in Calgary. Really? Yeah. Went to a music festival with my parents years before, but I don't even remember when, but it was you're coming and that was it. But this one I the I remember because we it was one of those ones I lived in a small town, so we you buy a ticket that gives you a transportation to Calgary and back mm-hmm. and your tickets. So yeah, because you were in a small town, small town, southern Alberta, right? So yeah. <coughs> Sorry, I'm still sick. <laughs> okay, Garth is a good choice for a first concert, honestly. Excellent. Showmanship, explosions. Oh yeah. It's all Especially good. back the then, 90s. that was like yeah peak Garth Brooks time. Oh, and great entertainer. Like it mm-hmm. started out that there was a a guy in a white suit sitting at a piano, so you thought he was gonna do. Uh, what was that song? The one the with red the strokes. Red, the red yeah. strokes. Red, oh, red strokes. strokes. I love but, that song. But then right. you're watching, and they're starting the music up, and then you see a cowboy hat coming out of the top of a uh, of the piano, and he just flies out of the piano and goes into uh, "It Ain't Going Down Till the Sun Comes Up." Nice. Mm-hmm. Should should check out his daughter's stuff. She's pretty good. His daughter's yeah. been on Dope Nostalgia. Oh, sure. Yeah. Really? A lot of people don't know that. Do you want to know why? I wasn't allowed to promote her as Garth Brooks' daughter. So the agency, like, I can talk about it now. <laughs> but they were like, you're allowed to ask one family-related question in the interview. But one in all your promotional materials, just talk about her as Ali Colleen. Because she's trying to make it without being under on the... On her own. Mm-hmm. Well, go on. Without the network for that. Yeah. No nepotism, and uh, she's fantastic. She's good. She's really he, good. That was a is, that was a great episode too. She is the type of person you want to have a beer with. She is yeah. funny and nice, and I think she'd hang out with us. Like honestly, <laughs> like but yeah, you know, Colleen. that was such a great episode. Like your interview with her was so so enjoyable. Like definitely go and check it out if you guys haven't yet. And check out her music. It's mm-hmm. really good. Yeah, you would never guess she was Garth Brooks' daughter. Actually, well, she kind of looks like him, but. <laughs> You know, and she calls Trisha Yearwood. She calls Trisha Yearwood her bonus mom. Isn't that cute? Oh, adorable. Yeah, I love that. So yeah, Ali Colleen. For those of you who didn't know, go go back to that episode. That's Garth's daughter. Okay. Yes, and Rebecca, tell us about your first concert. Um. Well, I did a lot of like fair concerts, but my actual first real concert was. You might be surprised, but it was New Kids on the Block. <laughs> Detecting a theme here. Uh-huh. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Um, <laughs> and I was in the second to the last row. Like the stage was straight on, but I was at the Oakland Coliseum. And if you, uh, or Cow Palace, wait, something in Oakland. It was huge. And they were only like this big. And I could see them. And Every, I remember crying. Yeah, I was just crying and screaming and crying and screaming and Joey Joe. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I cried so much for out of excitement. So yeah, new kids surprise. New kids surprise. I noticed a lot mm-hmm. of us back in those days never had good seats. Now we have all the good seats because <laughs> now we. Make but you know what? I think part of it too is that my you know we were my parents were on a budget and mm. we can buy the the best ones and now I tell my husband you know okay get ready this is a tour year we have to start budgeting and saving money I, I hear year in advance to make sure I get all these good tickets mm-hmm. so different now and I get that I am one of four kids so for me to be able to go I had to bring my younger sisters at the time and Mm -hmm. then my parents and I don't think my my brother was a baby at the time so he didn't go but um yeah Mm -hmm. so we had to buy like five tickets and so that got expensive so of course we were relegated up high 
Yeah, when we were dependent on our parents a little bit more, it definitely made a difference on where we were sitting. A hundred percent. We were just lucky to be in the building. Yeah. You know, I was just excited to be in the same city, like, or zip code. I was just so excited when I knew they were in California. I'm like, yes, they're here somewhere. Yeah, Kendra, first concert. Uh, It wasn't New Kids. Oh, <laughs> so, no, sorry. A little, a little too young for that. But it was Backstreet Boys. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was 12. Yeah, fitting Jimmy, in with the theme a little bit. Jimmy's um, other favorite boy band. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was 12 years old. I went with my friend, and it was a terrible experience. Because, oh, uh, why? Um, well, because we got we got there, and it was at the... Uh, so I think 97 would have been the Backstreet's Back Tour, I think. Um, and it was at the stadium. And they had these giant pillars up that were blocking certain seating which was where we were seated so we couldn't see anything so then the staff members came and said okay you guys are going to be getting moved so that you're in a spot where you can see things uh but it was moved all the way up to the nosebleed sections and my friend ditched me (laughs) because she didn't want to be up there so she found a way onto the ground and made her way to the front of the stage and left me so I ended up sitting up in the nosebleed section with like this mother who got ditched by her kid. So she ended up talking to me the whole time and she had no clue who she was watching. She's like, who's this guy? I'm like, that's Kevin. Who's that guy? I'm like, that's AJ. <laughs> who's that guy? I'm like, that's Nick. I don't want to talk to you anymore. I hate my life. <laughs> <laughs> I was You're like, so I know why off. your kids ditched you. Yeah, no kidding. I'm like, oh man, it was, yeah. So I wasn't very happy with that. So when uh, a few years ago, I think it was 2019, Naomi and I got to go see the Backstreet Boys together and it was much more enjoyable that time. <laughs> we were drunk. We were drunk as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? It was so exciting because we had so much fun and then they played all the songs we wanted to hear. Like even their deep cuts that we wanted to hear. They played Don't Want You Back, which is my favorite song off Millennium. Oh, it was, so, it was like so good. So We were dancing started, in like, the aisles and yeah. People were probably like... <laughs> it was so fun it was it was such a good time we went to karaoke afterwards and then i had to get up at 6 30 the next day for work and the next day was not very fun but that that night it. was great it was, <laughs> it was worth, worth it. it and looking into the chat here first concerts we've got mikey p mike prince mikey of poland says mine was either charlie pride or kenny and dolly Ooh, did that happen in what decade mikey <laughs> Love you, Mikey. <laughs> oh, it's so fun to bug Mikey, right? Right, Jimmy? Oh, it's so easy. He's like a <laughs> low hanging fruit. So are you. Oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. <laughs> if I had oh. a feeling, that would have hurt it. <laughs> the 70s, okay, he's in late, late 70s. 70s. So I might have been born. Maybe. Oh, wait, late 70s. I, I was probably born. Yeah. I definitely was not. Nope, me either. Yeah. I realized that when you said you were 12 and 97 with the uh, Backstreet Boys, I'm like, well, I've been out of high school already <laughs> <laughs> for two years. <laughs> it's true. True. We got yeah. a good age range here, though, but it's all kind of within about ten years, I think. Mm-hmm. Close. Uh, Mikey and Jimmy on the upper end of that ten years. Yes, yeah, twenty. Just Way kidding. Upper. Jimmy turns <laughs> fifty this year. Woo! Woo. We gotta Not have a the... good party for you. And I still play with it. lightsabers. Yeah. Hey, you know what? <laughs> good. Good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. When's your birthday? November. November what? 18th. Oh, same, that's same my week, anniversary. Same week as Kendra's. Yeah, I'm the 15th. And that's your I anniversary, celebrate. Rebecca? I celebrate 18 all the time. Oh, awesome. Nice. Maybe you should include Jimmy in your anniversary <laughs> this year. Oh, he, we can have a three-way. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, Hello. I think that's another channel. That's not this that's, channel. Yeah. <laughs> YouTube stops Wrong content. Stream wrong content uh, yeah <laughs> what All could right. go wrong 
<laughs> well, maybe I should go into our next question, which is your first <laughs> album. The first album. Oh, wait. I didn't you answer didn't... the question. No. no MC I mean, Hammer. Yeah. MC Hammer. MC, <laughs> MC Hammer. I 19. saw MC Hammer in the 90s. In the, and he's from Oakland. Mm -hmm. He's from Oakland. He was, I think it was, <laughs> I saw him in 90 or 91. I can't remember which year. Yeah. So I probably saw the same concert you did. Yeah, it was good. Only you know, I, I was like hardcore into MC Hammer for a good two weeks after yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I love New Kids again. It was great. It was great. <laughs> but uh, first album, first album you ever bought. And when I say first album, should I mean it with like your own money? Or should it be just like the first one that you what about picked both? on your own? I, I had two answers just in case. <laughs> but two at the same time. All right, Niskers, let's hear ya. All right, so first um, first cassette that was ever mine, 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 I picked it out. It wasn't pilfered from my mom's collection, was Millie Vanilli. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And the first CD that I ever bought with my own money was Mariah Carey's Music Box. I love that. Nice. Yeah, my parents had an amazing record and cassette and even eight track collection. So the amount of music that I was exposed to before that. But Millie Vanilli was mine. My parents, for some reason, had no interest in purchasing a Millie Vanilli cassette tape. So strange. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> How dare you guys? <laughs> from, from those two questions, you have very eclectic taste, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. She does. You know what? You know what helped foster that? The Columbia House Record Club, honestly, <laughs> because you could order anything for a penny. It's true. You could just be like, I oh, learned oh, so, so much from Columbia House and BMG, just random. Oh, that sounds good. A band called Moist. Okay, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what it is. <laughs> I don't even know who these guys are. You guys had Columbia House in the States, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And BMG. Did you, did you fall down those rabbit holes? Totally. We're I have coming so up many to that. CDs from them. We are coming up to that. <laughs> I'm, I I I jumped ahead. Oh, Chrissy, what's your favorite favorite first? Sorry, your first album. So I think my first record was like the Snow White uh, soundtrack, like or <laughs> or Care Bears or Smurfs, something like that. But my first tape was given to me, and it was from my parents, and it was Eddie Rabbit Horizon. I he loves a rainy night. Yes, that was my jam. Is that, that was my album? favorite song. <laughs> that is it. Yeah. Oh, I have that whole entire album memorized. Um, and then I think maybe the first one I purchased was either Hangin' Tough or maybe it was like Debbie Gibson or Tiffany. But I think it might it was probably Hangin' Tough. Okay, wicked. Wicked awesome. <laughs> my 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 order just switched all of a sudden. Like I so I'm I'm just gonna continue with uh actually Jimmy is next now in my order. The first album, buddy. <laughs> First album I bought was um, Kim Mitchell, and it was the uh, Shaking Like a Human Being, so with patio lanterns on it. And the no first Americans cassette, no... sorry, what's that? Go ahead. And the first cassette I was ever given was Rick Springfield uh, Tale. You and I went to Rick Springfield concert. Yes, we were Rock at, Fest. We headlined Rock Edmonton Rock Fest. Yeah, like and then 2019, and then we took uh, took an Uber to uh, to go do karaoke, and we were pulled over by the cops because the cops thought we were being kidnapped. Yeah, <laughs> the cops pulled over our Uber after that. Yep, yeah. they they they're like, "Are you guys okay back there? Are you here under your own free will?" Yes, he's our Uber driver. <laughs> I remember that because I met you guys as a karaoke that night, and you guys told me about that. Yeah. That what? Well, how much fun you guys wow. have! I can't wait to be part of this experience. <laughs> <laughs> that was an abnormal one for sure. But uh, going back to your list, there, your first purchases, first purchases. What was the first one you said before I cut you off? Uh, the Kim Mitchell. Kim, Kim Mitchell was the one I bought, and first one I got was Rick Springfield. Kim Mitchell, pure Canadiana. Does anybody know about Kim Mitchell in the U.S.? Okay. Song Patio Lanterns. Those patio lanterns, they were, nope. The stars in the sky. Yep. I can't sing it. 
<laughs> yeah, pure Canadiana, but he's big in Canada. He's a legend. Max Webster, you know, good choice. Good choice. Yeah. It was yeah. 80s, but I get it because you're old. <laughs> then, there's Mikey. then there's Mikey in the chat saying, wait, his first album was Willie Nelson on an eight track. Oh, wow. I love it. Because that was Air it. Supply, All Out of Love. I'm all out of love. And yes. A cassette. My coworker, he's like 22. He says to me the other day, he's like, I had a cassette once. <laughs> he was fucking with me, though. He knew he was oh. saying that. Oh. <laughs> I was I'm like, sorry. wow. It's a cassette. cassette. Yeah. Yeah. It was so funny <laughs> when I finally got it. I'm like, fuck. Anyway. <laughs> okay. So my rotation moved. Chrissy. You already went to me. Rebecca. I've had some booze. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> She's had booze and it's moving on her. So it's moving. <laughs> and we're like, you know, it's like we're a package deal. So <laughs> okay, well, um the my first album ever, I believe it was my uncle or my mom that got it for me. And it was the go-go's vacation. And I know you interviewed one of them and oh my God, that's so amazing. And then um, the first one that I actually bought was actually in, I want to say it was still in 89. So I still don't hit the 90s yet, but he was definitely popular in the 90s was uh, Bobby Brown. Don't be yes. cool. That's a great album. I had that mm -hmm. album. Yeah. That's Thanks the first one I spent house. my money on. My prerogative. Mm -hmm. yes don't be cruel new jack swing we love bobby brown mm -hmm. whitney corrupted bobby just saying yeah yeah well <laughs> you know that's a whole uh Let's whole nother pandora's box <laughs> yeah. that's a whole other show yes they, they each had their their issues yeah <laughs> okay so then my next one's kendra am i right yeah okay yep. Uh yeah, so the first tape that I was ever given was like the self-titled Garth Brooks album that had um oh if tomorrow never comes and the dance on it. Yeah. Um yeah. Love I I love that album. It was a great one. Yeah, I got it for my birthday. I think I was about I think like 10 maybe. Uh but that album was actually from 1989, I think. So but the first one that I ever bought for myself, a CD, was Clumsy by Our Lady Peace. Canadiana. Our Lady Love Canadiana. Yeah. yeah. Clumsy was a good album. Have you ever had uh, Our Lady Peace on the show there, James? Uh, no, we've never had interviewed them, no. 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 Maybe one day. Well, we'll be doing a, an episode on Our Lady Peace of this show pretty soon. But um, yeah, that's a good a good choice. My first, oh, mm -hmm. my first cassette was '88. That was Tiffany, the original Tiffany album. And then my first CD was in the '90s, and it was the band Extreme, and the album was Porno Graffiti. You know, because it came out with more than words. This nice little guitar ballad, and everyone's like, "Oh, I love <laughs> that song!" And then I'm like, "I love that song!" And the guitar player is really cute. And then, yeah, I I went to their concert. They played here in 92 and then I fell in love with the band and their funky metal sound. And I love, I love extreme extremes. Actually my number three. Can yeah. I add something right there? Yeah. Okay. So uh, my mom worked at a bank and she knew this man who looked just like Michael Jackson and um, he was going through a divorce and he wrote this song and then he it was an amazing song and he sold it without realizing he wasn't going to get any credit for the song to no. extreme. And guess what song it was? No. More than words. Are you, are you, what? Really? Do you know he's telling the truth? Yeah. It happened before they even released the song and he was realized after he read back through the shit, the, the paperwork the stuff. And so and he read through it all and realized and was like so upset and distraught and crying to my mom. And yeah, I guess. Sorry. Take no. I'm I still I'm 
I want it was to about believe bad, bad, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure because I, I'm so into them. Like I, I'm pretty sure they wrote okay. it. Okay. I don't know. They totally wrote it. Don't listen to me. I know nothing. I no, like new Rebecca. kids. Rebecca. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying you're lying. Uh, no. No, no, no. No, I know that. I know. I know. I understand. No, I, I get it. I understand. <laughs> oh, by the way, hi, Tracy Bird. <laughs> oh, oh, Chelsea. Chelsea. <laughs> hi, Tracy. We love you. Hope you're feeling better. Hope you're doing well. Um, uh, yeah, no. Okay. I'm going <laughs> to investigate this. I'm going to investigate this. I want to talk to this person. Sure. I'm gonna <laughs> We're going to do a committing. Diane Sawyer 2020 interview. <laughs> I don't, I, don't the, I, I think his last name was Jackson. I have to ask my dad if he remembers the name. Oh my, I bet my brother would remember his name. I don't, um, since my mom passed, I can't ask her. I want to believe I, him. I bet my brother would remember and he's, he's screaming right now in the other room for the 49ers. So I, yeah, I, I was going to say they're within one score right now. So oh, are uh, they? Oh okay. yeah. And the screaming is really happening in the background. I can't so we it. can't I hear can't it. So that's good. Oh, good. So true. So Annie says uh, she doesn't remember her first album because she's a fan of many artists, and that's totally fair, Annie. You mm -hmm. are a big fan of music. Tracy says her first cassette was Beastie Boys' "License to Ill." That was such and a good album. Is that the one with Sabotage? No, I don't think so. Oh no, Sabotage was the next album. I think I could so. be wrong. Isn't, isn't that the one with uh, "Fight for Your Right to Party"? that one maybe yeah that might i remember be. isn't that the one with the um i had both of them but isn't that the one with the fighter jet on the cover yes uh which uh, so it has uh brass monkey fight for your monkey, right monkey no sleep till brooklyn yeah brass monkey which That's one were you album. asking about sabotage no it's not yeah, she, oh, the next she's crafty. I love that. Oh, yes, that's a good song. BC Boys, cheers. Love that. We don't have oh. enough rap on Dope Nostalgia. Actually, we don't have enough country. We don't have enough rap grunge and grunge. We haven't even touched grunge yet. Yeah, There's we got it for that. Everyone I've approached has not answered. Really? The closest oh, I've God. gotten might be still a maybe. I've tried to get. Baruch Assault was one I really want to get. Man, that is so amazing. Baruch Assault was like, I love them so much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they, opened for, they opened for Bush here in 94, and they were way better than Bush. <laughs> I, I loved, loved that. that. I loved them. They were great. The, okay, so I never really talk about what artists say when I approach them, because I kind of just keep that quiet, right? Um some I'm so lucky to get the amount of yeses to come on the show that I've gotten that I don't talk about the no's. But there was one I wanted to bring up because it was hilarious. And that was Lisa Lope. Her agent or manager, when she wrote me back, said, we're sorry, but Lisa Lope does not have the bandwidth at this time. <laughs> and the I'm band. going, do you mean like she doesn't have internet? Or are you meaning like she just mentally doesn't have the capacity to do this right now? What does that mean? <laughs> That's so confusing. <laughs> the bandwidth. I don't understand. Maybe she was somewhere remotely where there's no Wi-Fi. But wouldn't you just say that like internet? I don't know. I, I don't think know. that I just they mean hilarious. like like the like there's so much going on. Like I don't have the bandwidth. Yeah. To, like, it's to, like, like the emotional that. bandwidth. Yes, that is a very it's confusing funny. way of putting it. <laughs> totally, that's it's very trendy. It's a very trendy way to say we can't take on this project right now. <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> In all respect to Lisa Loeb, whoever you're, you've got doing your your booking is doing a fine job. Fine job, and I enjoy <laughs> the bandwidth I was, comment. I was saying that she should reach out to Paula Cole. <laughs> Paula Cole's got new music out, and uh, she's like just got TikTok and all that. That'd be cool to have her on the show. I don't want to wait. <laughs> I can't sing that. Yeah. I'm going to sing that, that tonight. Creek? Isn't that the yeah. Dawson's Creek? Song? Yeah, Dawson's Creek. 
Yeah. 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 We okay. tried to go back and watch that show and it was a no-go. We made it through a whole entire episode and I'm like, these people are insufferable. Why did I like them when I was? It's so funny to go why? back and watch old shows that you're like, why did I like this back then? It's so we didn't like, know better. Didn't, didn't know better. Know how good we really didn't be. know better. We only had no. We were supposed to. It kind of relates to what Niskers and I talked about on the snacks episode, where nothing hits the same anymore when you eat it. It nothing yeah. nothing hits the same. And we were trying to say, is it because the product has gotten worse, or is it because our taste buds have gotten older? Probably the older. I think maybe things both. have also changed to a certain extent because there's mm-hmm. like certain things that just like, like, for instance, I used to love Reese's Pieces cereal, like the Reese cereal. Yes. I loved it when I was a kid. It tastes like styrofoam to me now. I'm like, there's no way it's gotten that different from the time I was a kid. It just tastes like styrofoam with zero taste now. But that's what it would be without sugar. Right. I feel like maybe they cut back on sugar because there's so much pressure to cut back on sugar in in general. Yeah. But I loved the peanut butter taste in it. It had such a good peanut butter. The brought to the... you by sugar. <laughs> <laughs> I also kind of was... almost wonder if it's because like back then it was always like a treat and you didn't get things as like now we can just go to the store and pick it up. Yeah. Um, we have our own money. And so it there might have been a little bit of we rarely I mean, get this yeah. and so dishing out for i'm the convinced cereal. that's different i'm convinced that they completely changed it it tastes like garbage when you think about all of the information <laughs> that we collect about different food chemicals and stuff like yes and and making things way cheaper as well yeah. like when you cheapen the formulas it mm. just doesn't it it's it's just not the same cuz like they tried bringing back they've tried to bring back so many things and it just doesn't hit the same and probably those chemicals hit my brain in a certain way and it just doesn't do that anymore maybe because my brain is old i don't know no i think you're right there's a lot of cheapening of the product i think so for sure well and there has been something to uh to be said too about like them changing the sizing of things like where like reese cups like I'm going back to Reese. That must have been something I really liked when I was a kid. But like the Reese cups were like quite big when when you were a kid, and now they're smaller. And people are like, "Oh, it's probably just because I'm older." But they actually have like kept the same price, but sm- like they made the the smaller to make it more profitable. Is, so there is, is things that have changed. Is it smaller, or is it the fact it that your not- your hands were smaller back then and they're but bigger that, that's now? That's what I was just saying. That's what I was just saying is like they, they want to make you think that. They want to make you think that, but there was an article that actually measured that things that they have made certain things, chocolate bars, race cups, all those things are, are made a little smaller now to change the profit margin. The scammers. It's called shrink shrinkflation, where the price stays the same, but the amount of product that you're getting gets smaller and smaller. Because you can always fit a dollar a dollar into your budget. It's really quite a combination, I think, of both of those things, right? Yeah, I agree. Our memories and yeah. I was gonna say, I also wonder. There's lots of stuff that you guys can't have in Canada that we throw in our food. I'm wondering if you should get that cereal when you're down in the states and take it back to Kendra and see. Okay, I would so. Okay, and then let's do it. Sure. If, if it tastes close to what, then when you guys come back in July, we'll like stock her up with it. Hell okay. yeah. Yeah, two trips. Yeah. You get to taste test the stuff from the first trip. <laughs> so, Niskers, we'll send- anything you need, let me know. <laughs> American <laughs> snacks up. Nice. Just bring American in snacks. love American snacks. That's and beautiful. we're excited about the Canadian ones. I know <laughs> those wafer things. What were those? Oh, the cocoa oh, crisps. I you the coffee crisp. Oh, coffee yes. crisps. Yes. Oh, coffee crisps. Oh, yeah. I loved those. Rebecca, they have them at Cost Plus World Market. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I got a big one. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. I need some. Well, just let have me know. I'll bring you guys whatever you guys need. You know, ketchup I need chips those. For sure. Oh, and I guess these ketchup chips 
I, I, and all so they're delicious. <laughs> they're I, delicious. I don't even know what this is. I'm just picturing a chip dipped in ketchup. So no, it's not like that. I think like I you know, know, like barbecue flavored chips. It's ketchup yeah. flavored chips. Yeah. Have you it's ever so had powdery. the Ruffles all dressed? They do all what? dressed chips up there. It's all mm-hmm. dressed, so it's a combination like salt and vinegar, barbecue, and I think you guys ketchup don't chips. have all dressed. We do, oh, but okay. it's more recent. Like wow. we have it in. Ruffles has all dress. I don't need a lot of chips. Shout out to Pandora in the chat. Welcome, Pandora. Uh, (laughs) Look, Mikey brought up Mash, which is I I don't. Were we talking about TV shows at some point? We were, weren't we? But I think so. But that's definitely isn't that eighties? It's eighties, but it 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 does take me back to childhood as the one show that I would leave the room. I fucking hated it. (laughs) When I heard that, <laughs> as soon as the music started, it was like, I'm out of here. I hate this show. I'm a child. It's boring. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but then you talked to remember my like, parents oh, watching the that one thing ever. My my parents watched it too. Parents yeah. So did, so did mine. Like I didn't get it when I was a kid, but it's on Disney now. And I actually like it. Uh, more now than I did when I was a kid. So I maybe that's the like challenge. Because you're old. <laughs> so Dawson's Creek when you're old sucks, but Mash when you're old Mash is now good. It, it switches. Yeah. It yes. switches up. Honestly, that, that that was one of my dad's favorite shows. So like, I I definitely have a soft spot for it. Yeah. It was my dad's favorite too. Yeah. Dads love Mash. Dad yeah, love dads love mash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Mikey. Dads love mash. <laughs> I want to. T- I'm making that T-shirt for our for our merch shop. Copyright. Oh yeah. Right now. <laughs> I was gonna say that sounds like a great t-shirt nostalgia idea. T-shirt. Nobody touch that dads shit. Love it's mash. mine. <laughs> Actually, it's mine. Who said it first, Kendra? I did. I'll yeah. give you half the profits. Done. <laughs> dads Let's do love it. mash. Got it. Wrote it down. It's going to happen. Tomorrow when I'm Love sober, it. I'll be like, Love what it. the fuck is that? Make sure. And then, and then make write, sure write something on, on there. Ask Kendra. <laughs> yeah. Ask Kendra, who's also going to be drunk. Just, just watch <laughs> just watch the playback. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to edit this shit. <laughs> well, That's make sure that it gets on pretty soon because, you know, Father's Day will be coming up. Oh, oh. see? So, she's thinking. Like time for a drink. Okay. Oh, we're we're on to year two for Dope Nostalgia because we only did one and a half so far. Oh man. <laughs> yes. I'm gonna so, die uh, okay. I'm just having a little quarter of a shot. Yeah. Well, I have to divide these up because I have to parent and shit. So. <laughs> all right. So year and two. Every time I get on with Naomi, I end up drunk. <laughs> we do that. Cheers, love, please. Cheers. Mike's going to order a mash. Dad's love mash shirt. Yeah, you will, Mikey. Okay. Okay. Let's get Are we? These. We've gotten through two yeah. questions out of a million, so <laughs> I guess I can speed it up. But the best part is the conversation. We're having a great time. Yeah. We're having a great conversation. I hope you're having a good time. Oh, okay. yeah. I hope I the hope... people in the chat are having a good time. Are you having a good time out there, people in chat land? I hope so. Okay. <laughs> chat land. Yeah. yeah, you're not drunk at all. We're gonna go. <laughs> well, I didn't eat yet today either. I got oh, a second. Yeah. Good thing I'm getting a ride. Fuck. Okay. Um, <laughs> favorite Pokemon. Now, some of us are too old for Pokemon when it initially came out. I was like 18, 19, 20. I was like, didn't even care. I like Pokemon now as an adult. But I'm gonna start with Jimmy. Who do you have a favorite Pokemon? I never got into Pokemon. I judge people that are involved in Pokemon. <laughs> um, you, you in particular, I judge you when we're sitting there at a bar and you're doing Pokemon Go from from your chair. Fuck you. And I, I do, I do judge you, and I judge you openly. I've never, never got, I've never got into. I, I got a funny story though, but my, my. I, cousin he was five he was into pokemon yeah and we took him to the pokemon movie Mm -hmm. and for the first 10 minutes of the movie all it was was like 
it, like all the weird sounds they make, like like whatever, all the weird noises. And then finally, someone actually spoke, and I went, "There's people in here." And I, I guess I said it quite loudly, and everybody in the bar start or in the theater started laughing. <laughs> yeah, I, I do judge uh, Pokemon people. <laughs> Because no one judges lightsaber people ever. No, never. <laughs> God I inspired. I love you, Jimmy. <laughs> Asshole. I love you. <laughs> now, I want to ask Niskers about her favorite Pokemon. So I was a little on the upper edge of the age when Pokemon originally came out, but I had a little brother who was in, like, he was right in that age. So, and of course, everything he had, I needed to, because spoiled brat kid. So it's classic <laughs> Pikachu. Because Pikachu was so cute. Mm -hmm. And in today's day and age, when I was playing Pokemon Go a couple of years ago, uh, Glammeow. Glammeow was my favorite because, you know, the cats and the glamorous and all that stuff. So, yeah. Glammeow is And then I, I owned a cat cafe. I owned and ran a cat cafe for a few years. I loved oh. that place. Yeah. And it was, it was great. And both Kenny and Naomi came to visit and both. Uh, Naomi adopted a kitty and we adopted out 265 cats in the time we were open. Um, where was I going with that? Oh my God. Oh, right. We had a, one of those big gigantic Snorlax beds, like the kind that you order from some faraway site and then you have to fill it with the beads. We got a giant Snorlax bed and I loved taking pictures of the kitties, the really little ones right in the middle of Snorlax's belly. Oh, so Snorlax yeah. has such a special place in my heart because of the cats and the cafe. Will you share you, that you with had us? such great like stuff you could get from the cafe like you had that Nintendo box too like uh the cat scratching box and they could jump inside it was like a Nintendo Game Boy I still own I still own mine my cats still love it so great it's really I cute because sometimes the cats will go in there and they pop their little heads up and it looks like they're actually on the screen of the game boy and i'm like oh this is my favorite game i love when the cats oh pop my up. gosh i am just loving this so much For cat let cat me see if so i can awesome. find some pictures yeah it was pretty how, neat how far away is that from michigan <laughs> <laughs> When we go to Michigan, it's not close, is it? It's actually further no. away than you are right now. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm above you, Rebecca. I'm the that's a good place to be. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Naomi's on top. Your... I am closer <laughs> to you guys here than we will be in Michigan. So just so you know. Jimmy and I we <laughs> have like a three hour flight to you. Yeah. But it's like a oh. four hour flight from here to Toronto. Oh. And that's how you say it. You say Toronto. You just kind of like slur it all together. That's how it's Toronto. Like. Tor Toronto. Yeah. Yeah, Toronto. 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 Right? Toronto. Oh, Toronto. that's like us. Sacramento. We, we, we don't say Sacramento. We yeah. Sacramento. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sacramento. Sacramento. Santa Ana. We don't pronounce the T's. Yeah. Mm. So just don't pronounce the T's in California. Mm -hmm. There aren't any. I, I oh, guess oh, I thought I you meant really in the word California, <laughs> and I was like, there aren't any. <laughs> no, 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 I mean, like, in, in your state. Yeah. <laughs> Chrissy's like, Naomi, maybe you should slow down on the drinks. There is no tea in California. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I, heard it, I heard it with my kids. Button. We don't say button. We, they say button. Or, no, but. button. 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 We don't say button. They say button. Calgary. And it's. Wait, Tyrone actually question. pronounces his T's though, because he's that kind yeah. of person. Because he pronounces Canadia, Canadia. Yeah, he does. <laughs> oh, okay, on. Chrissy. Oh, oh, let's see. Oh my God! Oh, oh my God! Oh, that's oh. So cute. <laughs> that is the cutest thing ever. I now, love. Cats. You want one for your house? Um, mm -hmm. I was yeah. too old for Pokemon. Mm -hmm. I took my kids to a Pokemon movie. I only know about Pikachu and like Eevee and. Pikachu is cute. So I'll go with Pikachu. Sure. Good Where's... choice. Rebecca. I have a whole story to go with Pokemon. Yes. So I hated did, Pokemon. Did they write and more than words? <laughs> <laughs> well, the sorry, truth I is, resist. I love you. Arjar wrote. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. So at the time when Pokemon first came out, 
I worked at Sears. And so that they, they had Sears experience where they put like, they featured certain things. And at the time when Pokemon came out, we were the only ones that had Pokemon shit. And that is why I hate Pokemon because the area was always a mess and it was in my spot where I had to keep it clean. It was impossible. I had mothers yelling at me because we never had shirts in stock. Like I had anything to do with the shirts and the to uh, it was a mess. I hated it. I hate Pokemon and Tyrone and I mo about met when we worked at Sears together. Mm -hmm. And so we hated Pokemon together. And I remember us talking about how, even before we realized we were going to be married and have our own children together, but we would discuss how much we hated it and how we hoped our kids would never, ever, ever like Pokemon. And we had <laughs> kids that ended up liking Pokemon. And so, yeah, I hate Pokemon. And um, <laughs> however, this, this, was it Glam now? Glam now? Yeah. yeah. I think that if I was a Pokemon person, that would be my favorite one because again, I, I, I freaking love cats and I'm so glad that um, we're meowing out here because um, did I mention I like cats? <laughs> See, Niskers, you got another fellow cat lover here. It's great. Mm -hmm. Oh God, I love cats. <laughs> it's almost as like, you should see Nisker's uh, tattoo. She's got a bunch of cat tattoos. I I want it. I I only have one tattoo yet, but I am definitely getting cat tattoos. And oh my oh, god, look at that kitty right there in the belly button. That is just <laughs> so cute. So cute. Oh, I love that. We go see if I can find one of my cats. I'll be right back. When you think about, <laughs> for sure, for sure. When you think about your, like jobs that had to do with like, and how that pissed you off with the Pokemon. Mine was, uh, I worked at Hallmark in the nineties for a very short time. And I hated the whole Beanie Baby craze. Oh, I can see that. Yeah. At that time. But yeah. it also added an, an element of interest to the job because otherwise I'd just be counting cards. Fucking boring. <laughs> so Beanie Babies, better, much better. You know, Kendra, <laughs> did you have a favorite Pokemon? Uh, yeah. So I I watched the show back in the day. Um, yeah. and um, what was it? Charmander was my favorite. I liked Charmander. One of the starters. Yeah, I did. I thought he was really cute, and of course, Pikachu. Love Pikachu. Um, and then I did sort of get into Pokemon Go uh, when it first came out, like, but my, I, I just, I've been like notorious for having a phone that doesn't work with Pokemon Go. So I just didn't continue with that game, but yeah. I didn't, yeah, pretty uh, much I didn't really pay attention to Pokemon when it was big at the time because I was older, but I got into Pokemon Go when it came out and I'm still hardcore into it. As Jimmy told me, I, I'm a huge Made nerd. Fun. Um, I like. I, 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 I loved anyway. the show. I loved the show, <laughs> but I, like, I can't get into the show. It's just the game I like. I I was young enough to enjoy it back then, but um, I, I do have to say I did have a lot of fun playing Pokemon Go the one night when you were in my area and you're like, I'm gonna play Pokemon Go, and I came and met you, and we went to the liquor store. <laughs> and of course, we went to the liquor store first. <laughs> we grabbed alcohol <laughs> and we're walking around the park by my place playing pokemon go yeah. at like 10 or 11 o'clock at night and this was like two years ago or she lives in an area called grease spa which is like a pokemon like what it was a heaven hot spot a hot spot yeah so we were drinking and playing but um but my favorite pokemon is hitmon top because do you guys know hitmon top no one it's what is it dancing like? it's the dancing He's got like this 90 B boy fucking dance that he does. And then he jumps up on his head and spins around in a break dance. I fucking <laughs> love him. Chinese. <laughs> him on top. That's yeah. the guy. Uh, I changed Bulbasaur. my answer. That one sounds cool. He's so You're like, cool. okay, I'll go with that one. <laughs> Look up Hip on top. Pandora Knight says Bulbasaur was her favorite. Oh, yeah. Bulbasaur. Yes. Was Walter P. my district manager at Hallmark? I have no idea. I was just a plebeian there. Is that what? It, I was. Is that a real word? Plebeian? I was. I was, just, I was at the Please? bottom of the ladder. Please? The ladder at Hallmark. I worked there for a few months and got through Christmas and said, "Fuck this." <laughs> After these messages.
messages. We'll be right back. Hi. If you enjoy Dope Nostalgia, thank you. Consider becoming a Patreon subscriber today for as little as a dollar a month. It helps keep the show on the air and rolling. So if you want to check out our Patreon, it's at patreon.com slash dope nostalgia. One dollar a month, and you'll be helping support one of your favorite podcasts. Oh, hi, it's Zach Peter, your new favorite pop culture guru, serving you the hottest tea three times a week. From the latest news on The Real Housewives, deep dives into celebrity legal scandals, unfiltered convos with your favorite stars, and of course, the latest from Vanderpump Land, I've got you covered. And new episodes of the podcast are now available in video on Spotify. And they don't just let anybody do video, but this platinum blonde has won them over. So if you want the latest news from the ultimate tea spilling professional, tune in to No Filter with Zach Peter. That's No Filter with Zach Peter on your favorite podcast app now. Hey, friends. I kind of miss getting those messages on my answering machine like we used to back in the day. What I'd really love is to hear from you, the listeners of Dope Nostalgia. This is your chance to be on the show, giving feedback, telling us what you love, what you hate, and who you'd like to see more of. Call us at our new toll-free number, 1-888-741-9192. Leave us some feedback. Your message could be played on the show. So give us a call, 1-888-741-9192. Toll-free. Enjoy extra sugar-free gum. You get extra flavor, extra fun. The long-lasting sugar-free gum is extra with NutraSweet for extra refreshing flavor that lasts an extra, extra, extra long time. Extra flavor for that extra long flight. Extra flavor for that extra long night. When you chew it extra, the extra fresh flavor lasts an extra, extra, extra long time. Extra lasts extra long. Hey, everybody. I'm Rick Campanelli, and you're listening to the Dope Nostalgia Podcast. What do you remember <laughs> buying from Columbia House? We'll start with Jimmy. Did you ever join Columbia House? Right I Columbia? never joined Columbia House. How did you avoid? Wow. How did you avoid that trap? I grew up in a small town, and 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 the shipping was like insane. Was it? So, yeah. I never thought about the shipping costs. Probably because I just put it on my mom's credit card, like an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Same. And and plus and plus, you know, when I was a kid, and my my dad um, was what's the best way to put it? He was cheap. Um, and you're not no, you're not getting a, a Columbia house. You're not getting all these CDs that you don't need. Yeah. So. That's fair. Didn't really get Cut into off. it. You're one of the few who escaped the trap. Annie, uh, when her brother was a member of Columbia House, we bought a lot of CDs. Hell yeah, you did. I wonder if you paid full. Did any of you pay full price for any of those CDs? Uh, after, yeah. I, I I, I, did not flake on my commitment. Uh, I'm guessing my mom did. I don't know. I, I didn't pay attention to that. I just got what was in the mail. and <laughs> I don't think I got around to everybody. The whole rotation switched again. Who did not answer the question about Columbia House yet? Chrissy. Oh, yeah. So I got tons of different genres and everything. I had like New Kids on the Block, Boys to Men, EMF, Whitney Houston, Madonna. My, first, my, EM, my EMF was on there too. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That was such a like cake. Um, Beck later on, Poison. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Just It just exposed you to so many things. That was the nice thing about that era. I mean, now we have even more exposure to whatever music we want, but that was the best way we had then other than like music video shows and stuff to take in a whole album. Yeah. Rebecca, did you comment yet? Uh, Just that my mom probably was paid for her first Penny G album probably. And then I ordered all the other stuff. And at that time it was more like Bell Biv DeVoe and stuff like that that I was into I think that's where I got my Bell of DeVoe tape. Yeah, yeah I think same. that's where I got mine too. <laughs> Kendra? Uh, uh, I never did the Columbia House. Too young, was... didn't exist. Just yeah, kidding. I was a little too young, I think. No, but remember, they had- I am so interested. What year were you born? 
1985. Oh, dear. That's we passed That's like my little sister's yeah. age. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I now... do love the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What did you beg your parents to buy for you that's memorable? Jimmy. Uh, okay. Star Wars nerd. So the, uh, the snow speeder from Empire Strikes Back, I begged for it and I did actually get it. It was awesome. And then my jerk of a brother broke it, but, but yeah. Oh, I had younger brother. I used to beat him up. So he used to break my stuff. Trade off. <laughs> Oh, then he couldn't enjoy playing with it anymore either because he ruined it. Yeah. Well, what about you, Chrissy? I'm trying to think. I was, I feel like I was decently spoiled. I don't know if there was stuff. The only thing I can think of is like every Christmas, there was an art kit from the Sears catalog that I always put on my Christmas list and my parents never bought it for me. And I think A, because it was too messy and B, they were like, you don't have the talent. Like <laughs> So no, I mean, no, no, no. <laughs> He really I mean, isn't that creative, though. <laughs> I'm not that creative. I was more, are. I'm like, a, no, I'm a science and math person. I think oh, that they knew games. that I was Never not, mind. I was not a painter. <laughs> I was not an artist. I, like, I still do stick figures. <laughs> they were like, let's invest this money in other places. They didn't Did say that to my face. Did plays math games? <laughs> with Adrian, not with me. <laughs> have a whole class with kids about math and i heard games. about there was gonna be math games so i was like great mm -mm. no naomi you and i could be at the bar while they play their math games, <laughs> <laughs> I games. No math game. um i really didn't have to beg for anything i always <laughs> wanted my own phone line like yes. desperately needed my own phone line my own phone number and everything so the compromise was i did eventually get an Ex uh, an extension mm -hmm. in my bedroom but never my own phone line so when you have Every an extension that just means that you have the plug-in in your room but it's the same phone number so you still have to like pick up the phone and check if someone's on the line yeah and if someone was on the internet that fantastic sound <laughs> uh, let's the destroy dialogue. what they're doing online pick up the phone totally now my little brother again because he needed to tickle me elmo well I needed a Tickle Me Elmo as well. So my mom did end up getting both of us Tickle Me Elmos. Oh, nice. um, the original Cabbage Patch Kid craze, like 1984, my mom was part of that. I still have my original Cabbage Patch. Mm -hmm. Going back a little further than the 90s, but that's all right. That's huge. I still have it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember that. Do you have it with you? In your house? Yeah, give me a second. Be right back. <laughs> I really want to uh, see it. I'm like, she's going to get this now. Yes. Cool. I remember my Cabbage Patch Kid was named Bunny Debbie. Bunny Debbie? Bunny Debbie. And she had Bunny Bob. Debbie. Mm hmm That's a name, right? That's that's a stripper's name from the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had Most to stripper out. names used to be this. cabbage patch dolls. Okay. <laughs> From now on, I'm going to change my IG name to Bunny Debbie. <laughs> All right. I, I, the, the, the squares keep changing, so I keep losing track of who's next. I haven't said anything yet, and I'm very excited to say what Go for mine. It. Okay. So I, we're, we're not talking. I'm not talking about my 80s experience with Cabbage Patch. Okay. But that would have been it. But I did get the Cabbage Patch. But... The one thing I really wanted and begged my mom for was a Joe doll. You know, when new kids yeah. came out with the dolls and I yeah. wanted one so bad. And my mom told me no, because are you ready? She didn't want me to undress him and look what was under his pants. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she wouldn't let me have the sheets because she didn't want me to sleep on top of the new kids. Yep. Sounds like how I was raised. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah. So. I never got a Joe doll until, was it, Chrissy, when did you get him for me? I My think birthday. it was your birthday in 2022. 2021. Or 2021, you're right. You had 2021. it. 2021. Wow. I got my Joe doll. My sister had a, a Joe doll and a Jordan doll. 
And I have undressed him and looked under his pants just because I had to. <laughs> Were you able to have Ken doll? Yeah, I had Ken. See, that makes no sense because Ken, it was the same I, thing. I don't know. I, but I'm guessing because I was older. Correct? I think it's because I was older with Joe. And um, when we know Joe's really packing. So, you know. <laughs> 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 just so everyone knows the dolls were not packing they were, they were <laughs> and, are you and, sure that's not uh, life saying <clears throat> yeah yep. so i really wanted joe i didn't get him until chrissy gave him to me thank you chrissy you're welcome mm -hmm. also i hope this audio is okay my headphones i had to unplug oh it's it'll it'll be okay okay because otherwise i was losing power chrissy did you answer the question I did. You did. Okay. I'm sorry. But also, <laughs> but also like Miss Cruz, I wanted my own phone line and I did not get one and it took forever to even just get a phone in my room. When was it those clear phones that you could see the inside of the phone that everybody wanted? That was in the I 90s. Was that the 90s? It was or was that the 80s? I had one of those. That was I had one of those. 90s? It was the 90s. Old dog spoiled. Those All are right. so cool. <gasps> oh! oh! That is Bunny Debbie? No, that was mine. That's not Bunny oh, Debbie. Wait, what's this one's name? Nope. Um, her name I renamed her to Joanne Shannon. Joanne <laughs> Shannon. Joanne Shannon. I love that you have her. She's in good condition. She's not bad, hey. My mom sewed this dress for her. She used to sew matching dresses for my Cabbage Patches and me. Like it was amazing. Oh. The wardrobe my Cabbage Patch had. I'm sorry. I feel like I'm being so distracting from these questions. Look at my doll. Look at my cats. No, I'm asking you. I'm asking you. It's great. I'm going to write down the order of people because it keeps changing. That way I don't fuck this up again. Does that make it's sense? It's okay. We can tell you. I know I still need to go for this question. I yep. think Jimmy. Kendra. Jimmy did. I oh, did. he did? Uh, yeah. For me, the power wheels, the, the Jeeps that like you could drive. Mm -hmm. and oh, like, like yeah, the big ones not like a big little, ones like the one you actually yeah buy the oh, power okay. wheels yeah i wanted one of those real bad i never got one and we, now she we works were, at a car we, dealership and now i work at a car dealership i've driven everything <laughs> from from corvettes to ambulances dats buses <laughs> like you name it i've driven it yeah wow I guess that was very telling to something I was going to enjoy when I was older. <laughs> I don't want a Jeep. <laughs> um, what did I beg for? Mm -hmm. A few things I remember begging for was I got, I begged for Dream Glow Barbie. I got it. I got the Dream Glow Barbie at Christmas. But I also suffered with the same thing where it wasn't my mom. My mom didn't care. She'd get me Barbie. No problem. It was more like the grandparents. The grandparents didn't want me having stuff like that um because really? of the anatomically correctness of it yeah and i remember oh, my so grandma they were being like, like yeah and they were like you can't have a ken doll or boy dolls because they thought the same thing but then because i needed a boy to play with i would just cut off the hair all i would make you know that that weird barbie in the movie <laughs> i would make a weird barbie so i cut off all the hair and that would be the boy so basically you'd end up with lesbian barbies and <laughs> I'm sure my grandma would love that. Yeah, she would love that. And uh, that's what I did. Yep. <laughs> um, but the I love thing, hearing these stories. <laughs> I had to make, I made my own boys. It's fine. Yeah, it worked great. <laughs> um, any crushes you don't care for now? Crushes that you had in the 90s that now you're like, why did I, it, it, it doesn't do anything for you now. I'm gonna start with Jimmy. Okay, she wasn't 90s. It was like late 80s, though, close enough. Okay. Um, Kim Cattrall. Oh, oh, Sex in the City. I, but I've lost interest at Sex in the City. Really? Yeah, yeah, but I, I got a crush on her from the first Mannequin movie, which came out in 87, 88. That was an amazing movie. I remember that. Yeah. Uh, I had movie. a huge, huge crush on her. And then now I, yeah, not so much. <laughs> no. Uh, okay. Now I got a list in front of me. Uh, Nicole Niskers. Um, 
I mean all of them that I don't care for now because they were all kids back then. I don't know. <laughs> nobody problematic. Nobody really sticks out like, how could you? See, that's the thing. A lot of times it's it's not that you didn't like them anymore because of looks or anything. It's because they did something. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, no, oh, not into that. No, I feel that way about most celebrities in general. Mm. I don't like any of them to begin with. And then they do things that make me go, ooh. So nothing to report, pass. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Chrissy. Yeah, nothing sticks out in my head. You still love the same ones. Pretty, yeah. The same celebrity crushes. That's good. That means I didn't let you down. <laughs> <laughs> Even Jordan. <laughs> uh, that was no but that's more adult were, it was no Joey. But you were a joe girl you were a joe yeah. girl yeah she swerved later in life <laughs> rebecca oh i have two oh, i know you guys are all oh i don't have any <laughs> um so uh kirk cameron i absolutely loved him i had his posters up on my wall that's before a good kirk cameron no, I don't even like admitting to that anymore. Yeah, and then dry. the other You're one, like dry like the Mojave now. Yeah, no, oh god, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then also, and I'm still haven't gotten back on that this other boat is Tom Cruise. I'm just not a Tom Cruise person anymore either. I love, I love them both, and those now are, I'm like, those are two perfect picks for this because totally, like, so many people had Tom Cruise crushes, and then he jumped on mm -hmm. Oprah's couch. And then you're like, what the fuck, Tom Cruise? No, thank you. <laughs> he just made a fool of himself. Kendra. Yeah, so no, nothing. Yeah. Sorry, I don't I, need to run through too quickly either. No, go for oh, it. No, you, you, got, you got to get going with these. It's cool. Sorry. Uh, honestly, um, pretty much any of the guy crushes, then <laughs> I ended up gay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I think we should have another shot for that one. <laughs> uh, uh, for that. Let's go. All the boys, fuck it. Three, I like vaginas. <laughs> I love the fact that you're drinking right out of the bottle, Kendra. Yes. <laughs> I don't Cheers. have to work tomorrow. Cheers. Cheers. That bottle was full when we started. Mine would be not uh, anymore. <laughs> Gavin Rosdale. I had hello. Hi, Michael. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> Michael. This no, is Minecraft DJs. Oh, those are cool creepers on there. Yeah, nice. Oh, I thought you were talking about his face. He's been using the Oculus, so he's like red and red right here. Oh, no, I was talking he's about the creep, the Minecraft. 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 Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's, I think this is like day four or five of PJs. He's been sick. <laughs> here. Oh, man. Microphone. So mine, mine was Gavin Rosdale because I thought he was just the hottest thing in like mid nineties. And then I saw them live and they were boring as hell. And then he cheated on Gwen Stefani and I'm like, ew, fuck you. Done. <laughs> done and done. There. Pandora and Mike <laughs> both said my, Madonna. Both said Madonna, hey? Mikey yeah. and Pandora. And Julian yeah. Sands. Julian I Sands, I'm picturing. Yeah, I don't know who that is. I'm picturing Julian his face. He Julian was uh, in the Warlock movies. He was in a couple of B movies that I know of that you would have never even heard of. Yeah, um, I don't know that person. <laughs> okay. All okay. right. This one should be brief, I think, because I think we know a lot of them already. First celebrity crush. The first one. Jimmy. Okay, uh, you guys are gonna make fun of me, but and it's not one of the it's not one of the uh, new kids. Um, oh, okay. Oh, I'm sure. okay, so, okay. okay. So, uh, uh, Christina Wagner, she was uh, Felicia in uh, General Hospital. Are you serious? My, my my mom used to we used to watch it like it was beyond after school, and whenever she was there, I just sit and watch. Uh, like I had a huge crush on her. And I still, I still kind of do get hot and uh, she's still hot and beautiful. When it, oh yeah. Oh, uh, she so was crazy. one of my favorite characters on General Hospital. Yeah, was a when you first go freak. Oh yes. Oh. Mm -hmm. He was one of yeah. my first crushes, Jack Wagner. 
Are you mm-hmm. kidding me? General Hospital for the win. <laughs> nice job, Jake. Niskers. Um, first one would have been Joey from the New Kids on the Block, but first wallpapered all over my bedroom was Jonathan Taylor Thomas. Ooh, Home Alone. That is a popular choice. choice. Yeah. Good choice. Yes. And he's only recently made us been in a sighting again. People are seeing him. Uh, I saw recently, like a month ago or something. It was all over my X feed, Twitter feed. Like, J- JTT is out and about. About a boot. He doesn't even look like himself anymore. Well, you don't say. It's 30 years later. Come on now. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, we, was, we all no did. No kidding. <laughs> exactly. Chrissy. Uh, so we talked about mine, I think, last year at this time. Um, mine was Christopher Crabb, a.k.a. Jonah Roberts from Danger Bay. Danger that was, Bay! That was my first crush. We Chrissy talked about this Danger game. Bay. Chrissy <laughs> loves Danger Bay. And then I remember the first time you told me that, and I'm like, this is a Canadian show. How did you even get Danger Bay? Disney and Channel. she did. Disney Channel. Yeah. Joey was my second one, but he was my total first. Rebecca. Uh, it was Kirk Cameron. <laughs> it's okay. We all make mistakes. Life. It's okay. Canceled. And you know, I want to add in there though. Ralph Macchio was also kind of up, kind of high. Mm-hmm. You know, um, again, but that's more eighties. Oh, then that's fine. They it's all 80s. went to the side. They all went to the side once New Kids came out. I forgot who any other guy was ever, and I went straight to Joe, and I've loved him ever since. It makes sense. 80s is fine. It totally makes sense with our age group, too. Kendra? Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess my first crush would have been Taylor Hansen. And <laughs> like a girl. The long hair. Is that the oombop people? Me. The oombop, yeah. Oh, okay, <laughs> just making sure. Yeah, I yeah. Remember. Yeah, I, I loved it. him. You know, what, yeah. like, mistakenly thought they were girls and then found out they were boys. Okay, that's okay. But... <laughs> You know, being being like hardcore in the closet back then, of course, like Taylor Hansen was like the one. Uh, yeah, Nev, Nev Campbell was definitely in the closet for me, though. Nev Campbell was. Oh, okay. one. well, she's Angelina yeah. Jolie was another one too that wasn't there. Hey, she we're all probably... attracted to Angelina Jolie at some point. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> one of my friends from high school, and then a college roommate, um, looked so much like Nev Campbell, and it was you know that. 94 to 98 era ish she had that girl next door look yeah between her being the girl next door and angelina being like the badass like just covered like a vixen like tomb raider angelina uh like girl interrupted crazy (laughs) gia gia was like one of my favorite ones when i was younger mine would have been the very first one was bo duke from dukes of hazard oh (laughs) yeah which is funny because I've grown up to like tall, dark, and handsome. Like I'm more into dark guys after a certain point. Like Jordan ruined me for everything in the future. But like, yeah. no, I was into Bo Duke. <laughs> I was into Bo Duke and then I was into Jack Wagner and then I was into Jordan and then it all went from there. So, yeah. I've been listening to Jack Wagner on Spotify lately. Really? Yes. He had a good we voice, watched hey? Melrose Place like front to back and then I learned that he had some singles out so I've been listening to them and like driving around. I, I know, was I too it. young. Oh. No excuse. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. 49 <laughs> We have to have our, our Mine isn't scope. updating. What? What's happening? Just screamed at us. Did you hear Tyrone scream at me? No, what just yes. happened? Purple. Karene. Hi Karene. Welcome so to they, the chat. Mikey, is that Debbie Gibson? Left. Mikey, do you mean Debbie Gibson? And then Pandora said Mario Lopez or Alyssa Milano. And Melissa. Oh, and Alyssa. Oh my oh, God, I, I love Mario Alyssa Lopez. Milano. I know. She's Mario great. Lopez's muscles. Ooh. Mario yeah. Lopez hasn't aged. No, he has not really. Not really. No, he, look, he looks solid. Like a fine wine. He was young and now he looks like him, but. Yeah, Mikey older? was Debbie Gibson. But not, oh. not Tara Kemp, Mikey. He loves Tara Kemp. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and uh, so Karine's here, and Mario Lopez I'm... and Alyssa Milano oh. are here. I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like a mannequin. Yeah, kind of. 
Just like Kim Cattrall, baby. All right. Yep. Let's go to, uh, okay, first of all, did you say that the 49ers are going to the Super Bowl? Well, congratulations. I'm still, showing, I'm still showing that there's like 55 seconds left, but that could also be that they have the ball and that they're just going to like uh, take down. According so. to what Tyrone just yelled at me. <laughs> We're going to the Super Bowl. So, uh, <laughs> yeah oh yeah they have the ball they have the ball oh you know Those what are... this means chrissy on the super bowl we have to wear our ears just because superstition yeah. and shit so i can't take my the... nail nail polish so off so it's this gonna be the 49ers and kansas city chiefs yeah, yeah. which is really oh. cool because a lot of their like back in the day like a lot of the 49ers um went Wait. to the chiefs so it's like, kind of cool. Like and it's a rematch of like before and the Chiefs won and now it's going to be 49ers. Anyway. Okay, so now our attention is fully on you. Yay, football. It happens for you guys. <laughs> it's We're right, halfway well, through the questions. Let's go. Are we halfway? Got okay. it. Did you buy teen magazines and which ones, basically? Jimmy? Uh, the only magazines I bought when I was a kid was like Popular Science. Yeah. Popular. Uh, oh, yeah. I love that so much that you said that. <laughs> Popular yep. science. So <laughs> I didn't even know that was magazine. It sounds it sounds uh, familiar. Popular science and popular mechanics. So they used to do a lot of uh you know, this is what cars are gonna look like in the future and and stuff like that. And I was a bit of a science nerd when I was younger. Oh, you and Chrissy are gonna have fun together. <laughs> oh fuck yeah, you guys can do math games. Sciencey <laughs> and do math and Okay, dude, don't get carried don't away. Get I used to. Drunk. I got over it. I mean <laughs> oh, you have I, to on... play muggins with me. You have to play muggins with me. We'll have to... there'll be tons of time where we're just like hanging around waiting. We can play for shots. Oh, what oh. could go wrong? <laughs> game will be awesome ready to go yeah miss cares did you buy teen magazines i did i did um ym teen 17 basically every single magazine that ever had a picture of jonathan taylor thomas on the cover that needed to come home so i could have more wallpaper in my walls <laughs> all of it and then my mom was a magaziner as well so always national Enquirer and all the ladies magazines I was always surrounded by it <laughs> l Flair, Vogue, all those. They're not teen magazines, was, but, but they were there. Was, was Flair Canadian? Flair was Canadian. Yeah. Okay. That's it probably was, why it, I didn't Flair like was that like one. the Canadian L, I think. Kind of. More fashion forward. Yeah. Never liked that one. <laughs> My girlfriends and I would like sit around and look at the magazines and we'd cut out our favorite pictures of the models and be like, this is going to be our outfit. And then we're going to marry this guy and we're gonna live in this house it was like that mash mash out of the magazines yes yeah <laughs> yeah i was gonna say that's just the other kind of mash that was the mash that we liked that was the yeah. good mash <laughs> when i'm at war chrissy um team beat bop big bopper uh tiger YM, beat tiger beat uh, uh 17 all of those Bop and Big Bopper were the best because of their nice pages. And the, the fold out ones. Yeah. Yes. Those fold out ones that depended on which one I was buying at the grocery store that day. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was babysitting money and it was all of them. Like, that's <laughs> so much. That's where all of my babysitting money went. So it was those and then the cards. Oh, 100%. Rebecca? I didn't do like the 17 and those ones i only did like bop team beat tiger or wait no yeah tiger mm -hmm. beat i only did those ones because of new kids and yeah whichever one had the better centerfold was the one i got Her at that week <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> He was in them for a while. The, the look she gave you when you said <laughs> 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 those are those eyes said it all. <laughs> I'm getting canceled. Wipe Kirk Cameron away and pretend he wasn't there. Okay. 
Fair enough. We will do that. Kendra. <laughs> yeah, I was the bop, Tiger Beat, Teen Beat. Pretty much anything that had Hanson on the cover was like my jam. And then once I like upgraded, went to Pink, and then it was anything that Pink was on the cover of. And then, yeah. Yeah, pretty much. That's good. Yeah. Um, mine, YM was the my favorite of the um girly ones, you know, like the with fashion and stuff. YM was amazing. And then I also <coughs> remember Sassy. Oh, yeah. Sassy, Sassy was good. It was more a little bit of it was almost more of an alternative flavor to the other ones. Cause they had like Courtney Love on one of the big covers, I remember. Courtney and Kurt were like on one of the covers of Sassy and they, they wouldn't have that, done that on YM. That would have been further down for me and I wouldn't have seen them though. That's fair. That's fair. But then of course I did all the big bopper and all that too for New Kids Era. Um, and Paul Abdul and Janet pinups and Tiffany and Debbie. I got all those pinups from those. And then mm -hmm. um, the other one that's actually a bit different that I got religiously was Metal Edge. Metal Edge magazine because they had Bon Jovi. Yeah. Yeah. And like, oh, oh, you and your I Bon Jovi. Yes, I yeah. can see this. Yes. Yeah. So bon Jovi, I, I don't think Bon Jovi was in like the teen beat or anything, were they? Was John mm -hmm. ever? In I don't think so. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah, I remember was... Metal Edge. I got Metal Edge. There was even one time where Pink was on the cover of it, and I was like, I have to get that. <laughs> I was like, Why is she on that? But I'm in there. But we got she was also working with like some rockers at the time. I Aerosmith. think Bon Jovi was like in on the cover, like in the Young Guns era. Like, like there was a few times it was like more of yeah. They probably did like questionnaires with John Bon Jovi. All the that. guys like the science magazines. <laughs> <laughs> Popular science. Enough, on the I wasn't into science weird science. Magazine. Mike Your, White. Oh, White Pandora. Matt Pandora is also into the science stuff, so she's she's included in that. I saw Mike's answer. <laughs> Karene. I hope if Karene is still there, what magazines were you into? I'd love to know. Oh yeah, because hers would have been down maybe in Panama. Oh yeah. Oh, here we go. Next question. Is there a 90s artist you cannot stand? Jimmy. I'm going to get hate on for this, but uh, Alanis Morissette. Get out. Really? Get I, out. <laughs> I can't stand her. Are you get out in Canada anymore? Get out. <laughs> Can I, uh, but let me tell you why. No. Um, I, I was okay with her for a little bit, but then when she did the Junos here and she was the host. That's like she, the Grammys. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, she was the host. She did like a little skit thing where she came out and she kind of, it bothered me, okay? I know where you're rolling your eyes. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. She, she sure. did a very a, a distasteful, she Good. disrobed and she was uh, fake naked and she even had the uh, hair and, uh, you know, in the hoo -hahs and, and We can imagine. And, and it was just, I just thought it was, uncool it was very like it's the juno awards you gotta have some kind of taste but don't you find it ironic don't you think oh, that oh. you are in canada and <laughs> <laughs> oh well, man okay That's amazing I, rebecca okay, that so was great <laughs> <laughs> thank you that was wonderful uh, niskers uh, that I can't stand now. Yeah, or just Leonardo just DiCaprio. I loved him when I was younger. I also Ever? loved Always? him. No, I loved him when I was young. And the older I get, why do I keep getting older and his girlfriends keep getting younger? It's not cool. It's just not is cool. There, I find that really gross. Yeah. That's fair. That's fair. My general rule of thumb of acceptability is half your age plus seven, and he's been out of that round for a while now. Can I say I don't think he aged very well? I agree. I agree. Yeah. I mean, you can't really... I feel bad. I don't ever want to, like, judge people on their, like, appearance, but I don't think he aged very well. No. He was never one of my <laughs> favorites, so... Yeah. I loved them back in the day, like uh, Basketball Diaries and all that. Um, What's Eating Gilbert Grape? That's a great movie. Great movie. Like, Romeo and really, Juliet. 
phenomenal movies in the 90s. Like he he was like so good. But yeah, I can understand that. Chrissy? Um, the one that sticks out is Corey Feldman. He's still kind of a hot mess now. Yeah, that's a good pick. I mean, Lost Boys mm. and like Goonies and like all these like great and then now you're like for me. Yeah. Fame kind of twisted him up a bit, I think. Mm-hmm. And yeah, him and his angels. Corey's yeah. angels. It's so weird. <laughs> Rebecca. Um it was nobody a- really sticks out. However, I had oh there's a song that I really can't stand is um How Bizarre from in the 90s. I fucking <laughs> hate that song so much. OMC. Hate the word. I hate everything about it. So that would be no, that's a great choice i hate to say that because i had the writer of that song on the show but it's- <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure he's an amazing person I he just was a very it. lovely person i can't stand that song either it's a <laughs> horrible I never, song I never i'm so glad you can agree with me i'm yeah, so yeah. glad you you agree because yeah. i hate that song it's uh, how horrible bizarre. how bizarre it's so fucking annoying to me okay yes kendra mm-hmm. uh, uh so i have two I went the route of music too. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, this was like a late '90s band, New Radicals. Um, Shit, that's my pick. I fucking hate that. That's don't. That album. Yeah, I hate it. Hated it. I hate that. Song. I, yeah, I hate it so much. It used to irritate me so much. Like the one with like the big before. foot on it, right? Is that the one with the foot on the front? Where yeah, it, I think so. Yeah. And then the other one, uh, which is funny because like the lead singer, he seems so cool, but I can't stand their music. It's train. Train, train drives sucks. me crazy. Damn. Like he seems cool, but like his voice like his irritates songs are me. Annoying. The his soul so sister much. annoys me. I know, I know. There's only uh there's like there's one song of theirs that I can handle. I can't even think of it right now because I still don't like it. Because you like blocked it. it out of your memory. Yeah. 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 I understand. But yeah, those are the two. I'm <laughs> so sorry I stole yours. Don't Naomi, worry. But I'm, I'm, I'm fine that you said it. that. That's my yeah. pick. Um, if, if I were to actually give another pick of an artist I can't stand, it would be Kid Rock. Same. Oh, fuck. Yeah. I hate him. Same. <laughs> sorry. Hate you, Kid Rock. Picture sucks. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I just that on, on your, like, for that yeah. alone yeah okay <laughs> favorite video game jimmy oh. uh nintendo zelda yeah, the classic original zelda yeah legend of zelda on the o- og nintendo yes console? on the og eight bit eight bit niskers super mario 3 for nintendo do you remember the unveiling of that in the movie The Wizard? I do. I yes. really do. Oh, I love that game. Love that movie. It's good times. Holy shit. That was such when the, when they lifted the thing and it was like do 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 Yeah. So exciting. Super Mario 3. I still to this day think that was the best Mario game ever made. I would concur. I, yeah. I would 100% agree with you. Yeah. I'll fight anyone who disagrees. <laughs> Catch these hands. So, oh, here so, we go. I will say that it is a great game, but for nostalgia's oh sake, God. 8-Bit Super Mario Brothers is my top favorite. Like, oh, gee. There's just, you know, with the, with the rectangle controller and having to sit, like, so close to the television. And your thumbs better. hurt. Yes. You got Nintendo thumbs? And our princess is in another castle. Our princess is always in another castle. It is. Uh, another shocking. Uh, we, I also had Donkey Kong Jr. math. Math? Did Donkey you say Kong math? Jr. math. You would, yes. You would have to go. And there would be these little, like, um, whatchamacallit, um, ivy vines that would hang down. And you'd have to go and, like, get the number and then go to, like, the operation and then get to the other number to like equal whatever it was it was we lost rebecca oh she'll be back it was because i brought up math she was like i'm out 
<laughs> he needed a math break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I swear, I swear I didn't talk about Kirk Cameron. I just, you know, <laughs> fuck. Rebecca's back. Rebecca, it's your turn. What's your favorite video game? Okay. I'm going to be a little different. I love Bubble Bobble and Busta Move 2. Wow. Love Bubble Bobble. Love it. <laughs> Do you know? Love it, love it, love it, love it. It's the best game ever. It's so stupid and I love it so much. It's what amazing. Console? Huh? What console? Oh, was I think it was on all. I think it was on all the systems we had. Oh, was it? Yeah, Bubble Bobble. You'll have Bubble Bobble. I didn't classic have twenty five cent arcade game forever. I think oh. I even had it on my phone for a little bit, and then Bust a Move. Freaking loved Bust a Move. Both of those games. They're just kind of like I don't know, not really that doesn't take much to play them, but they're addicting. Was it a dance game? No. The bus it's move? like like a matching no it wasn't but they're all like matching games like you match the three colors and then things pop and yeah oh okay okay cool <laughs> i didn't know that okay, one cool. <laughs> kendra Holy. uh Sorry. for me it, yeah it was mario or donkey kong uh mario 3 was pretty awesome uh donkey kong was like a big one that we played in our house for sure i like how they portrayed donkey kong in the mario brothers movie that came out last year the 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 better version we want to now officially forget about the original super mario brothers movie that came out that was live action and it was a total piece of shit that never happened <laughs> <laughs> erase it it didn't have no idea what you're talking movie. about exactly um, my favorite of all time is definitely Mario, but if I were to go with another direction, I would have picked Goldeneye for the N64. Ah, oh, good choice. That good was choice. a good game. Proximity yeah. mines in the bunker. I like to spawn the mines right where people would spawn. Like, I'd like to put the mines down so that as soon as they <laughs> became alive again, they would blow up. Evil. <laughs> I love it. I, yeah. I what I like to do is I like to throw mines on people, and then they would stick to them. If somebody else came near them, they'd blow up. They would both blow up. <laughs> you, could, yeah, you with those mines, you could get like three three kills in one shot. Or like speaking my of friends, shots, how many? Are, there's only been three shots, right? Not, yeah, we need one anyways. more at one least. More. That's okay. One I need more. water anyway. Sorry yeah, for the outburst. There was cheers. like an M80. Happy four year right dog four nostalgia. Years. Four, four years. years. Yay. People are celebrating four. the win and it was very, very loud and it sounded very, very close. And we didn't hear I it. I think that's what happened to my internet access. It, the house was too loud and rumbled everything. I lost you guys. <laughs> I think you guys might be experiencing an earthquake in the. Uh... In the yeah. Northern California yeah, area. Yeah, yeah. After the wind. From everybody freaking out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. What do we got from the comments here? Favorite games, favorite games. Nintendo, Star Wars, Mike P. Bubble Bubble was awesome. And yeah, I was. <laughs> Sweet Coden? Sukaden? Sweet Coden? Yeah. It's Japanese, right? Sukaden. Yeah. 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 I don't know those ones, but yeah. Um, with the guys when you play Goldeneye, they would um, turn off auto aim, and I'd get all pissed off because I <laughs> I'd have to actually work for it. Anyway, next question: favorite Spice Girl? Yes, let's go with Jimmy. Baby, baby, uh -huh. she's the lady. Yeah. What makes her special? She's the lady. Oh, the, the, I may have had a crush on her. May. <laughs> nice then uh nicole ginger i like her she was fun or a beat chrissy baby too i liked her sweetness like she was just fun and sweet but i think ginger would be like my was my runner-up ginger's runner-up rebecca ginger ginger mm -hmm. Kendra? 40. I thought she was gay. <laughs> <laughs> and I was into sports, so I liked her. <laughs> and her voice is really good, too. She's great. Yeah, she's probably the best singer out of the five of them, I think. Uh, I agree. Um, I kind of liked Beckham there, uh, Posh. 
but uh, ginger more so, I think. Yeah. That Poor was scary. Cool... She didn't. She didn't of... get any love. <laughs> no, I loved her too. I feel like I loved her too. I automatically loved her. Like I feel like my love for her was just super obvious. Like I don't know, because she's just she was so much life in the group. Yeah. Yeah. She I loved, I loved that movie. Too. Are women who are redheads? I I just am drawn. If I were a lesbian, I would definitely be going for redheaded women and. I like ginger. <laughs> she ginger everywhere. Just kidding. Anyway, favorite favorite toy. Favorite toy? Yeah, we're skipping trend because that doesn't make sense. Favorite toy. Mine uh, mine was uh, Merlin. I think I've uh, talked about it on this podcast before. It was a little handheld uh, game thing. You play tic-tac-toe. and It was that red of... phone looking thing, right? Yeah. Merlin? Merlin. Yeah. Did anybody else have that one? Because I remembered it after we looked, we Googled it, what it looked like. And I'm like, oh shit, I remember that thing. It it came out in the 80s. I don't remember. I was in the 80s. <laughs> Holy cool. Sorry, I don't remember Merlin. All right. Next is I'll forgive uh, you. Niskers. Favorite toy. <laughs> Uh, my favorite toy was Casio's My Magic Diary. It was basically like a little handheld Blackberry before Blackberries became a thing. Um, like all your phone numbers, your business phone numbers, there was a secret area, there was a calculator, your schedule. Holy shit. You were way yeah. ahead. Way ahead. So when cell phones came out, you're like, yeah, I already know. I know how to do this already. <laughs> I love like, that. Let one. me check my schedule. <laughs> totally. That yeah, that that was me. Chris, <laughs> Chrissy. Uh I liked the original Speak and Spell, like from E.T. That was that was bomb. And then we also, with my younger siblings, we had a Teddy Ruxpin, which oh. was so fun because you put in the Teddy Ruxpin tape that you could put in, like New Kids on the Block and other things, and Teddy Ruxpin would sing it. He would and sing. So, yeah. That thing was ahead of its time. How did it know? Well, no, it's because it played through its stomach. It wasn't it singing it. It was just its mouth going like this. I um, play through my stomach um... sometimes too. <laughs> <laughs> tonight tonight. Joy. Uh. Rebecca. Oh, I was totally a Barbie girl all the way. Um, and I but had a had a Joe doll back then, he would have been my favorite, but as Barbie person. <laughs> I love it. Kendra? Uh, I was big into rollerblading back then, but I also had this uh, Jumanji game. Like, it was an actual, like, board game that was like the movie, and uh, like, the middle, you'd press this thing, and it would, like, do that, like, you know, in the movie when it like shows you what the the thing that's happening is hap like the monkeys are coming out, it would do that. So mm -hmm. I I loved that movie. So I was like obsessed with that game. Well, that's good. Yeah, I'm I'm a, a Barbie girl and living in the Barbie world. I would have the Barbie van was really cool. And then um, what was the other thing I was gonna say? Toy, Mousetrap. The game was fun. I'd like to set it up, but I didn't know how to play it. I, I don't think anybody knew how to play it. I would just set it up yeah. and set the thing off. Yeah. And go. That's, I think that's how everybody played. I also love trolls too. That just came to mind. I loved trolls. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. They should make a comeback. Wait, they did. <laughs> I, I actually, no, I wasn't even fucking with you. Honestly, thought about that they should. And then I just thought as I was saying it, duh. <laughs> the, the movie. Trolls movie. Okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, in the okay. chat, what do we got a telescope. Telescope's a toy. If he was in the Sears wish book, which it was, it counts. It counts. Mm. Mm -hmm. Anything in the All Sears right. Christmas wish book. That's another dope nostalgia episode. Jimmy was in that one. It is. Favorite clothing item. Let's go with Jimmy. Didn't really have one. You were just naked all the time? Well, you are now. You're naked all the time, basically, now. So, <laughs> Most of the time, I don't have pants on. Well, like... Me either. 
<laughs> I I don't know. I just I don't wear clothes. It's I'm weird. I don't no, wear clothes because I like them. I wear clothes because you you have to, or you get arrested. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. All right, Nicole Niskers. When uh, in the nineties, I was obsessed with my blue vinyl jacket. Yeah, it's vinyl and it's blue, and it made me sweat. <laughs> but my God, it was stylish. I loved it. Was it long or short? Was it baggy? Um, tight? It was definitely fitted. It had the lapels. Um, it was bright blue. It had a zipper. And yeah. Where'd you buy I just it? remember being so sweaty. Oh my God. <laughs> what were the store? Where did we shop? In... <laughs> so funny. I think we came to Edmonton because I was living in Saskatchewan during my teens. So we did come to Edmonton. So it's one of those those dumb little 90s trendy stores where you got all the coolest things. Mariposa, Wait, maybe. Oh. Yeah, Mariposa, Mariposa was, was a big one. Uh, Reitman's? No. Reitman's? Was maybe. Ricky's the more mature one and Ricky's and Reitman's? Reitman's I don't and know. Both, both Reitman's and Ricky's were more mature. These are all Canadian stores probably that we're talking about, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It isn't until the last 20 years, I think, where U.S. stores have really become more commonplace in Canada. We had a lot yeah. of our own before that. Yeah. Um. But yeah, some trendy store, but yeah, vinyl for the win. Was it Le Chateau? Maybe. Le Maybe Chateau was my this. fucking everything. Yeah. It was good, yeah. It was my everything. But back then it was more affordable in the 90s. Uh, in the 2000s and 10s, they got really expensive. And then they went Everything bankrupt. was more affordable in the 90s. They went bankrupt. Le Chateau, they're gone. Bye-bye, Le Chateau. Okay, favorite clothing to Chrissy. Um, this one was pretty easy for me to, okay. So the short all, but with the one side up, one side down, that was totally my jam. Super early nineties. Did you roll not your the... blossom hat? Oh. oh, and the blossom hat. Yeah. You had a blossom hat. Well, you know, it was just like the, the I have floppy. One, the one. floppy hat. Yeah. The floppy hat. Like with the big old flower on it. I saw pictures of you wearing this hat. Yeah. There was, there was one, it was white. It was like white eyelet lace. And then another one that was like, yeah, the floppy hat with the big flower. But did you did you roll up the the um, the short legs a little bit, or did you just leave the, the unrolled? Oh no, yeah, they were rolled. Yeah, because yeah. they were like, yeah, yeah, they weren't <laughs> like down by the knees. Hmm. Rebecca, that's what I wore to the concert. <laughs> <laughs> that's perfect. So, um, my absolute favorite all time were my parachute pants in the 80s. I had the pink parachute pants. I loved my parachute pants. Um, but in the 90s would have been like my guess overalls. Or... Oh, yeah. I had a, I had some parachute pants. And then I wish they came, like, I want them back so bad. Can we start this somehow? Because Bieber, I want... Bieber's been wearing saggy ass shit. Like he was wearing like those pants with the saggy crotch, like the MC Hammer pants not too long ago. <gasps> Well, um, I want my parachute. Seriously, pants. no, just go on the new kids' website and the pajama pants that they had. They quite literally are like like parachute pants. They were so well, big in the legs. They're not the ones uh, from the eighties, though. They weren't so baggy. It was more of the material, and I guess they were kind of more like with the pockets, like uh, what what is I'm um, cargo, kind of like a cargo pant, but the material was like parachute. Yeah, the material was like love, parachute material. Yeah, I freaking love those pants. And they were pink. Yeah, I, uh, I had a hyper color shirt that I really liked. Hyper color was hot. Mm -hmm. and, and quick, I had one. Quick loved mini, it. Literally yep. hot. Like and then they went on a business. Your armpits were always their armpits to look yeah. obvious. Yeah. Stuff. yeah. I loved my hyper color and it was really trendy for a while. And then the other thing that was not trendy that I still have a pair of is Doc Martens, Doc Martin boots. They're kind of yeah. back though. Yeah. I saw their back because I was looking for boots and I saw them and I was looking at the Mary Janes are back and I'm so excited. I want Doc Martens Mary Janes now. I'm going to get a pair. The only thing I love, I love Doc Docs. Martens. I love Docs. The only thing I don't recommend wearing them in the winter. They are the slipperiest shit ever. You will wipe them. Uh, right we out. live in, Chrissy and I live in California. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I no, I'm Maddie like she went and got boots and I wasn't getting her Doc Martens right now. But um 
but yeah, that exact style. Although now we're the same size, so maybe I will get them for her. Yeah, you somewhere. should. <laughs> yeah. I love that you're you're the same size as your daughter now. It's so perfect. You can share so many things. And my son now. My son is now the same size. That's cool. Okay, what do we got here in the comments? Um, I know it's not very 90s, but I always love the poodle skirts and such. And the oh, I Those love are cute. Although, you know what? If I if poodle skirts came back around, I think I'd make a cat one. Mm -hmm. What would they be called, though? Pussy skirts? Yes. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. Because <laughs> pussy skirts. Right. <laughs> this is skirt. so fun Maybe being a on a skirt. podcast with poodle Colby. Is a... We only have a couple <laughs> questions left, right? Oh, no. One question. Is it one question? Oh, I don't know. I think it's awesome. the last one I have on my list right now is favorite supermodel. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Favorite supermodel. Did I miss anybody? Yes, I did. I didn't even Kendra. yes, I missed. I didn't even favorite clothing. Oh yeah, I didn't. Kendra. Kendra, I'm sorry. Go ahead, no, Kendra. No, I apologize. It's, no, it's all good. Um uh, obviously I'm still big into plaid. That was not <laughs> a big thing. But uh <laughs> I, I, I really <laughs> plaid doesn't go bad. It doesn't look bad. <laughs> it's a very lesbian thing too. Um, yeah. but uh I I had these ripped jeans that I, I fucking loved. I uh they were so ripped, like I actually had to wear like black leggings underneath them and they looked <laughs> like so badass. I loved them and my mom hated them, like hated them hardcore. And one Which day... made them better, right? Because if your mom right? didn't like it. It yeah, I was like, so mom, cool. they're so cool. Like, what are you talking about? And then one day she did the laundry and she said that they disintegrated in the wash. Aww. But I think I think she threw them out. <laughs> I have a feeling she threw them out because she hated so being them. a mom now and my children have things that I don't like. It is amazing how things accidentally get lost <laughs> and the kids can't find them. And I have no idea. No what. idea where they go. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, I loved those jeans. They were so cool. I'm sad I, they didn't live longer. They just fall right apart. I don't know why. That made me think of Donnie at BlockCon. Oh, I, I totally thought Same of Donnie, but I too. didn't want to bring new kids back in. But yes. <laughs> I know. I was like, I was like, don't bring new kids back in. Don't bring new kids. That, that, that. <laughs> Okay, sorry. I just think the same thing you did it. <laughs> oh, okay, last question for real. Uh fave supermodel of the 90s. Let's go uh with Jimmy. Jimmy, this is right up your alley. Oh McPherson. Nice choice. Oh. And to this I, day. I yeah, I loved her in Batman and Robin, which came out in the 90s. Yes, El McPherson. That's a such such a good pick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Niskers. Cindy Crawford. Yes. Classic Cindy. And you know what I like too about Cindy? I was watching one of her makeup tutorials actually earlier last night. Um, she never went thin eyebrow like everybody else did in the 90s. Eh? She kept her, she she said it in, the, in her makeup tutorial. She's like, one thing I've imparted onto my daughter is never over pluck your eyebrows you're going to regret that later yeah definitely yeah, regret yeah. it later because <laughs> she never did it she never did it and she says she has a lot of friends who do regret doing it and her brows are still great uh but that woman has that age like i mean she's aged she's like the older version of her but still completely young and looks absolutely amazing and her daughter is this fitting image of her like they could be sisters like easily it's bizarre is she dating that guy from the Elvis movie? Cindy Crawford? No, yes. Kai, Kai, her oh, daughter. Daughter? Oh, I yeah, know. I think so. Mm -hmm. I think so, too. Yeah. All right. Chrissy? Mine was going to be the same. It was like I was like, I was trying to remember, and the only one I could really remember and top of my head was Cindy Crawford. Cindy Crawford. Mm -hmm. Cindy. I think Cindy was... Maybe one of them one that felt more accessible to the general public because she was fat, high fashion, but I feel like she would also she did a lot more ad campaigns and stuff. 
than a lot of and them she did. She was like kind of like girl next door looking instead of like I don't know. Like that Pepsi commercial with the boys looking at her when she cracks the the yeah. yeah. But you know what? The other thing with her is that she started like for me anyway, when I was still quite young. And then it went all the way through and now even still you still see her and my and I'm in my forties now and she was back when I was in much, much young. So mine was also Cindy Crawford and that she's the only one I the first one that pops up into my head and I can only remember. Yeah, I think it's because she was super mainstream and accessible. Mm -hmm. So I think like and she had like her workout videotapes and all that. Man, I remember my mom took me to the doctor after we got that videotape because I kept trying to do her workout but I was not in shape I was a child and I wasn't in shape and she took me to the doctor because I couldn't move after doing it for two days. <laughs> <laughs> what's wrong with this kid that's, that's hilarious <laughs> I love that <laughs> yeah they're like she just overworked just tell her to take it down a notch it's gonna be fine <laughs> she's not gonna be proper <laughs> just bring it down <laughs> Kendra yeah, I'm on the Cindy Crawford family <laughs> again for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm gonna go with um, Nikki Taylor. Oh, I you guys remember about Nikki Taylor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And her, and her little sister, Your Chrissy sister. Taylor. Yeah, yeah. Nikki Taylor was big on on the Cover Girl, Cover Girl uh, makeup. She was always mm-hmm. on Seventeen and YM and stuff mm-hmm. too. Like, um, she had that. She had kind of a girl next door fresh face thing mm-hmm. too, hey? Yeah. She was, and the mole. She was later. So. And Nikki had a mole like well. Cindy's. Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't her sister the one that like died of the asthma attack? Yep. Chrissy Taylor. I think it was a 17 cover that I'm picturing in my head right now of the two of them together. I think I, I really like, remember sister that. died. Mm-hmm. I she guess was I don't super remember. young. Oh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sad. It was sad. It was very sad because she was so young. But, but uh, yeah, Nikki Taylor and I think Nikki Taylor still. I don't think she's modeling anymore, but I think she's still out there doing. Stuff. I'm sure she's still absolutely up. beautiful. Let's look her up, man. Um, what did it say? El McPherson. Her eyes and smile were so expressive. Very nice. Very nice. Oh, look for her in the movie Siren. Okay, good to know. El McPherson's out there doing things. Yeah. So did is there anything we missed? I think we went through all the the questions and we definitely talked a lot about the nineties and I yeah. have a question. Mm-hmm. Naomi, how did you come up with the name Dope Nostalgia? Because it is such a cool name Thank for you. what you do. It's, it's, I'm happy with the name, but it's been a challenging name at the same time. And the reason why is because the word dope a lot of times refers to drugs. So I've um, been, I've been shut down on a lot of websites where they just like, they're like, this is, this defiles our terms of service. Oh, <laughs> but you're like, I'm not referring to drugs. I'm not referring, I just thought about words that would express things that were said in the 90s that aren't really that's so dope much. people still that's dope. dope now but not as much like back then it would be like that's dope that's dope and so i just yeah I'm like this is dope dope nostalgia all right there was a guy i, I was working name. with who kept who who was one of the few people i remember still using the word dope on a regular basis when i was planning this podcast and i hear him say dope all the time and i'm like okay that's the word i like it dope so but yeah, like even just for like doing merchandise, like when I first set up T Public, they I sold one shirt and they and they shut me down. They said, uh, "You're violating our terms of service." So I wrote them a message explaining that dope. It's it's a bot probably looking for words. Yeah, mm-hmm. and they thought I was trying to sell drug paraphernalia or something. So I explained to them, and then they like, "Oh, oh yeah, no problem." Back up. <laughs> huh. So it, so it does come with some challenges, but whatever. I like the name, and it's simple. I love the name. I think it it just sums it all a lot really nicely, and I think it's a great name. And yeah, I was curious. I want, I want to thank you all for being such a huge part of the show over the last four years. You and uh, you know, I'm hoping that you're all interested in doing more episodes in the future. Absolutely, absolutely not. Absolutely. <laughs> Rebecca's like Naomi. Fuck you. Kirk Cameron sucks. <laughs> 
I and exchange didn't record. write more than words. <laughs> yeah. Dude, Don't we can record me back, Cameron. <laughs> we can record an episode like when we're back in like going from like Chicago to back up to Michigan, like in the yep. back of Adrian's car. We'll just record an episode. Yeah, a hundred percent. Don't Let's nostalgia on the road. I think you should do a Kirk Cameron episode and bring uh, Rebecca on. Rebecca. In. Oh Cameron my in God. <laughs> no, we don't want to know about Kirk Cameron in the nineties. Oh. <laughs> no, thank no thanks. You. We're good. We're good. We don't need any more of a platform. Oh, what are we saying? And everybody in the chat who hung around tonight, thank you so much for being a part of it too. We might see some of you guys later tonight, and we have to be at Kelly's in about half an hour or so for the party. Oh, oh, yeah, we have to get going. Get going. Yeah. Uh, Naomi, I just also want to say, yeah, like how proud I am of you uh, for the last four years. This show is amazing. I think it's like awesome that you're giving such an awesome show for people to go and reminisce and like such cool content. And I'm so happy that, you know, we got to be a part of it and I'm always fucking putting your show out there. Cause I, I really truly believe in it. And I, th I think that it's awesome. I'm so proud of you. Thank so happy you. birthday. Thank you. Thank you for being a big part of it over all these years. And I appreciate you putting it out there for me. I oh, mean a lot. So it's been great. And it's just going to keep it. It's a slow, steady grind when you, when you're growing a podcast, because there's, there are thousands of podcasts, hundreds of thousands of podcasts you can choose from. Right. So I, I, I keep improving. I kind of want to say something too, uh, in, in the same vein as Kendra. Um, I'm so proud of you too. And where you've gone with the podcast, but a story that a lot of people on this podcast don't know, except for you and I, is we went to see Lee Aaron mm -hmm. and uh, we were backstage and she she's turned a Canadian, to you. And, she's a Canadian rock star. Just and she America. turned to you and said, you're the dope nostalgia podcast. She recognized you. Uh, that's at, amazing. Yes. And I, that's, that was a proud moment for me because I was sitting there and, she picked you out and it was your voice, you I think, she part knew of it. You too. Uh yeah, but it's just I'm radio. It's not different. You're yeah. you built this, you built this podcast yourself from day one. And it's been all on you. And it's you know, was really cool moment for you to be recognized that way by one of one of the, the artists like famous people. And yeah. it was really cool. Canadian legend. Yes. She's a, she's a legend. Yeah. I mean, she just got her star on the walk, Canada walk of fame. Yeah. She's this amazing. Month. A lovely. Aaron. Yeah. That meant no, that. Wow. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Everything's like, wow. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Joey Lauren. Back to the blossom hat. <laughs> uh, Oh, so yeah, we'll do some more recording tonight at the party. Let's do that. Yeah, yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, maybe I should have a snack and, and go, yeah. <laughs> eat some food. Yeah, you need some carbs. Get some carbs. Get some carbs, Get some carbs yeah. and, and then crackers. and more sh and more shots all over. She's just gonna save that for the bar. <laughs> Thank you, everybody who is in the chat. Love you guys, and hopefully we will see you in a bit. I'm going to just end the stream right now. So you guys take care. Social media. Yeah, we've got it. Send us an email. Dope nostalgia podcast at gmail.com. Twitter nostalgia dope or on Insta dope underscore nostalgia. This podcast is licensed by SoCan because we believe that artists should be paid for their work.